So, good morning, everyone. We are back with the final game from Reykjavik Open. We can see the border, the players have not arrived yet. And I am Grandmaster Pia Kramling. I am Anna's mother. I will comment on this game too, the last round. And here we see Anna's opponent, uh, Yun Shen He from China. And uh, sitting down here, he's going to play face Anna and he's going to be white. So Anna is going to play black and that's very logical. Here Anna is also at the board. She managed to be there in time. Yesterday she had uh, to run to the pharmacy, so she was actually late. But there she is on time <clears throat> for to play uh, the game. And that will be very, very exciting. After eight games has been played, have, have been played, Anna is having a four and a half out of eight. She won a very dramatical game yesterday. She was under pressure. It didn't look good at all, but then she got some counter attack and her opponent started to go backwards and then Anna had enough counter-attack and actually she won a piece. We got a very very interesting end games. End games are very interesting, very difficult and an end game where Anna had a piece against two pawns. If it would have been a key piece against one pawn she would have been winning. Also with maybe more pawns on the board she could have been winning but like how it was it was absolutely a draw but her opponent wanted to keep more options open and he made a final mistake. So Anna won that game, that very exciting end game. And so, yeah, this is an early round, but it's not as early as when they played the double rounds. So Anna has been playing eight games. They have been playing eight games in, in six days. So they had two double rounds when they were started already at nine o'clock. Now it's 11 o'clock in Reykjavik. It's 12 o'clock here in stuck on CAT time. So and we can see how the players a little bit speaking before the game and this is you know chess is just so lovely like that that you are you're you know speaking maybe some people like to speak with opponents before the game some people don't speak but it's just very friendly before the game then there is a big big fight and it's also very friendly after when the game finished and sometimes like Anna did yesterday she was speaking a little bit about the game uh, to get a bit of and when they finished but they also afterwards went away to an analyzing room and they were analyzing more together and this is just something very good to do this is a very good way of learning chess one way of learning end games I told you yesterday is to play them out even if they look equal even if they so to play them out and another way of learning is to analyze the game together with your opponent afterwards because you are giving each other ideas and you are learning from each other. So this is absolutely the final game. I think that when Anna played in Reykjavik Open last time, she has been playing there for some time. She played last year, the year before, and maybe one more time. I'm still a little bit unsure about that. But last year, I think she also had four and a half out of five, uh, four and a half out of eight, and that she last year won her game. But she will go to face a young opponent. They are the same age, Anna and her opponent. And, uh, um, and it's a player who have been coming. He has gaining a lot of rating the last, I would say the last half year. So it's, it's, a, it's yeah, it will be a very, very exciting game to see what will happen. And of course, Alice playing with black, I would say playing with black is always a little bit more difficult, but we are different with that. Uh, some people prefer the black pieces and some prefer to play with white. So they play a tournament with classical games. Classical games, it means that there are quite long games. So Anna and her opponent, they get each 90 minutes. And in these 90 minutes, they will make, have to make 40 moves. After they have made 40 moves, if they will do that, they will get another half an hour. And all the time they will have half a minute after each move. And this is just so very, very, very important to have this half minute because <clears throat> you're getting help to use your time better. You're getting help to be able to win the game. Even if you are getting down to no more time at all, you still have this half minute per move. So now the players shake hands. Anna pressed the clock 
and White is going to start. What is he going to play? And he played A3. He played A3. Oh, and we can see a little bit smile on Anna's face. He played A3. This is yes, what he played. Uh, this was absolutely, I would say, a little bit of a crazy mo. And we can see Anna, <laughs> we see a smile on her face. But I just want to tell you an anecdote. My brother, I think he played against Bassman. This is back in the 80s and we were playing in Beal. I think I played a class tournament and brother played open tournament. I think he played against Bassman, a very created uh, player, very well-known English player. And he played A3 against my brother. They play a long fighting game and my brother lost that game. He wasn't so happy. So he... <clears throat> He wasn't at all so happy to lose that game. So the day after, he played A3 himself, and he lost that game too. So A3 was played. It's a little bit, yes, getting out of all the theory, perhaps. Yes, you have the idea. With A3, you are planning to go B4. It's not what is recommended, but you can absolutely do like this. A3 was played, and Anna go D4. She's putting um, the pawns in the center. And I would say that the most normal is that her opponent will go, uh, I will play knight f3. So he played knight f3. This is what he played. He played knight f3. And this, yeah, the reason is simply he wants to stop Anna from going, uh, he wants to stop Anna from going e e5. So if he would have played, I just want to show, if he would have gone b4, Anna could have taken the whole center with the pawns. She would have one, two, three, four uh, squares here with the pawns controlling them. That looks very lovely. And if there would have been an attack on this pawn, she could have defended with f6, but also yes, bishop d6 looks yeah, so normal, developing a piece. But this is not the game. But I wanted to explain why her opponent played uh, a3, knight f3. Now Anna go c5. And this move I didn't like so much because he, now he go b4. So uh, Anna can absolutely play this. And I would just say that e6 would be a normal move to play here. e6, yes, so you can take back. I would actually have preferred maybe to play, you can go knight f6. Yeah, knight f6 would have been the more logical move. But Anna play, so Anna play knight f3, c5, and now b4 is coming. And I would just say that e6 would be very natural to play. So if you take here, we can take back with the bishop. And if you go bishop b2, you're looking here, yes, to develop the knight, blocking it here. So I would say e6 is a very good move to play here. Yes, so sorry, this is position. So we see a very unusual position. I don't know if I've seen this so many times before. I don't know if I've seen it in a classical game, but it's just, and Anna play quickly e6. This is a good move. She would maybe have loved to go e5, but she can't go e5 because we see the knight would take the pawn. So she brought it one hit move uh, to e6. Her opponent is blitzing out the move. Now we go bishop b2. So the plan is that if Anna takes here and if she grabs this pawn, no, she cannot do it. This would be losing immediately because white is not only taking back a pawn, white is also going to win the rook. So after a move like this, uh, I hope Anna go knight f6. This is yes, such a logical move. She's stopping this diagonal. And what is her opponent going to play here? <clears throat> What is he going to play here? Is he going yes to leave this pawn? He could could it be uh, this would be logical? You take here, and actually we can see that her opponent has managed to this would be about equal, but he has managed to change this pawn for a pawn closer to the center. <clears throat> so and this B file could maybe sometimes be a, but it's about equal, but uh, and then go e3. His plan will to be attack d5 with c4 and then after to take here. So let's see, this is the position, knight f6 was played. Her opponent start thinking a little bit until now both of them <clears throat> have played very quickly. He took on c5 and Anna will, I guess, absolutely surely take back with the bishop. He took the pawn here. Now he's threatening to defend the pawn. So Anna should go back and here we can do that she will play. She takes back on c5. <clears throat> So both of the players have been blitzing out the moves, even though we see a very, very unusual position here. And now e3, and this is very, very logical because 
Uh, the black squad bishop has been developed. It has been on fianchette. It's a fianchette bishop here on b2. We call it like that. And the, sorry, uh, white also want to uh, develop the king side finish with the development on the king side. So this bishop needs to go out. And with e3, you are bringing the bishop out, but at the same time, you are blocking this uh, bishop. So it's not uh, so it's not so um, so it's not so active here because it's just looking into the wall. So now this is the last round in Reykjavik Open. Anna and her opponent both had four and a half out of eight. They have plus one, we say, which means that 50% is four out of eight. That is like zero. And every half point more you have than 50% is a plus. So Anna and her opponent, they are having plus one in the tournament. So, <clears throat> yeah, such an exciting game, such a different position. And that is quite nice that now these days we see so many uh, ways of playing in a new way that you didn't do before. It was more traditional if you play. It was not so many plays like Bassman who could play lots of different openings. He was yeah, so famous for playing this um, very, very unusual open, opening. But now we can see it more frequently. And here we saw her opponent playing A3. So Anna, yes, Anna had a very long, she had a quite long game. I think it was like four, was it four and a half hour yesterday? And she played a, a long end game and a very unbalanced end game. She had a knight against two pawns and it was a draw. It was absolute a draw. Her opponent could have gone for changing the pawns, then would have been a draw. But her opponent wanted to keep all the options open. And then he made the last mistake, which meant that the knight all of a sudden became so much Im more important than the two extra pawns her opponent had. So Anna won yesterday. And so Anna, the first round she lost against the grandmaster from Sweden. The second round she won against a young player from Sweden. The third round she lost again, a very young player from, in playing, player from India who is actually doing very well. I think he has five and a half out of eight, even though with a very low rating like 1900. In the fourth round, Anna played against a player from Norway and she won. In the fifth round she played against Uwe Arndt from Germany. She made a draw but that was a game five and a half hours long. That was the last game to finish and they finished with only the kings on the board. So that was very very exciting also an exciting end game and with a tricky different color bishop end game which is very uh, can be very exciting. It doesn't have to be always a dead draw. And then in sixth round, Anna lost. Uh, she lost against a player from the US who actually played very be beautiful with a peace sacrifice. It was absolutely correct, but he went wrong. Anna had a chance, but when she didn't take the chance, there she didn't get any more chance in the game and she lost that. And then in the seventh round, she played against, I think it was Malcolm Cooper from England. And uh, there was also a game going back and forth. Anna had such a lovely opening, but it went wrong and she had big, big problems. But her opponent in the very, very end went wrong with the king and Anna could catch the king. She was making a mate attack with two rooks and a bishop. And yesterday Anna won the game. So Anna has four and a half out of eight. What did Anna play? She played castling. Let's see what her opponent will do. Um, with castling, he can go, this was quite long, he can go bishop e2, he can also start with something like c4, and um, the, he can absolutely play more like c4 if he would like to. Um, but I guess bishop e2 or c4 is quite normal. I guess maybe Anna will go, will she go knight c6? Could it be that we will go something like this, start looking at these pieces? But this would actually be a mistake because you can push the pawn to e5. This would be a big mistake. So let's see what her opponent will play. I would say Anna has played very naturally. Uh, naturally, you can play in different ways, but this is one way of playing with the black pieces. Her opponent has played something very unusual, starting with a3. And when you start up with chess, I wouldn't recommend you to play more like this. Uh, this is something you can play when you have been playing for a long time if you want, but it's better to follow these basic rules we have. Try to put your pawns in the center, develop your pieces, 
and what did he do he played d4 here now i would say i would like the bishop to go to e7 more uh, I, I would prefer bishop it's possible bishop d6 is better uh, to go here it could be but i would probably pre but she has her bishop should be here or here i don't like the bishop on b6 it looks very strange she could also play a little in between move like this but I don't think the queen is so much better here and now after to come back. But then we will have this c4 and she will maybe in a position like this. Now black is having, white is getting out with the pieces. So d4 was played. Um, sorry, this is the position. Um, so, no, it's not like this. So sorry. Castling. Oh, we do like that. We refresh the board. Let's see if we can get... The position here what is no b6 is not played this is here anna played castle and we had no she didn't go castle she went b6 uh this move i don't like so much i don't like so much b6 here why didn't she go castle she played b6 um but okay and now d4 came here so uh she will need to move the bishop yeah she only has two more moves two moves to move the bishop i wasn't so fond of this b6 move before and the reason is like say we go here or here i would probably go to e7 maybe bishop d i this move is a little bit annoying here after here we can go knight d5 and i'm just wondering how is the position like this um and if you just try to grab it it could be that this is not so good is it not because we are getting some activities but we are a little bit weak on these white squares here so i'm just wondering how a position like this will ah the idea is of course we will have 96 and we are having a grip on c4 here so what happened anna played the bishop to e7 they are actually playing very very quickly both of them anna played bc d4 was played bishop to e7 her opponent, what did her opponent do? I, he played knight d2 and Anna went castling. So this is the position. Maybe he will go c4, but I guess he will go bishop d3. He will go bishop d3. And um, how is this here? Anna, if Anna go bishop a6 to change this bishop, he will go c4. And the question is, is this bishop so well placed here? You can absolutely play like this. It will be something like this. You will castle probably rook e2. I don't know if you can go some knight f5 and you play, put the rook here to c1. And we will have this position. It's about equal. Black has two against one on this side, but white has an extra pawn in the center. And for the end games, it's normally better to have a pawn, extra pawn further away, but it depends on what kind of end games you are having, if you're having um, actually. So uh, normally it's better to have a pawn more far away in the end games, but we are still very, very early in the middle game. This is position, bishop d3 was played. What did Anna do? She played bishop b7. Um, and her idea with putting the bishop there is to control e4. It's also the idea that if her opponent goes c4, she will bring, open up the position. So she put it here. But it could be her opponent just play castling. And I would say that they are playing so quickly. So the question is, is her opponent planning to play e4? Or is he planning to go c4? And I would say that this, as this is a backward pawn, this is the most logical. What I would like Anna to go knight c6. It's just more an active square here. Can, can we see something like this? I don't, I don't know if this is so uh, good to play here. And now probably we go uh, maybe queen c7 just yes, to keep this uh, defended. And we can see pawn structure where Anna has two pawn islands, one here, big one with four and two but white has one two and three but this is absolutely possible to play i would say it's possible to play for both because you have these pawns here and uh, th this pawn will probably go to c4 and black will try to attack these beautiful pawns and white will try to use them and try to get in d5 to play against the king so let's see where will ama play uh, no, she decided to go knight bd7, and this is maybe a little bit more passive 
because it's against 95. So, of course, if her opponent would go here, she would all, I think she would take here and play like this. I think so. She will get this beautiful square here and there will be a double pawn. So I don't think her opponent will play like this. Her opponent played now c4, and this is just, uh, it's a logical move. Anna can take, but she doesn't have to take. She could also play this move, which is quite a nice move to play, because um, the, the knight is active here. If you take here on d5, um, yeah, probably, but then we will have to play maybe like this. No, maybe knight e4 is not the right here. I would actually prefer to have the knight on c6. If he takes here, I think your opponent will take with the knight, and he's coming here to c4, and this is maybe a little bit more pleasant position for white to play. I would say this is a little bit, maybe a little bit more pleasant, but it's absolutely okay. Maybe we can go bishop e4. I'm just thinking here, rook d1. And um, yeah, no, rook d1 was not such a good move. Maybe, maybe yes, rook c1, and we will take and take, and we will play. Maybe we start some activities, and the idea is to play. Maybe queen b6 here, maybe queen d5. And we can see, again, this is so far away, but I wanted yes, you to see that we have pawns on black square. We had a bishop here. White will absolutely go for e4, and white will manage to get in e4, but we will try to put the rook on d8, and we will just play against this uh, pawn here, and we will try to play with one extra pawn, with maybe with a4, a8, maybe either to just remain the pawns because this is a little bit of weakness, or to play a5 and b4. But this is not the game. I will go back. I will absolutely go back. This is the position. We have it like this. c4 was played. c4 was played here, and now. Um, what can I add? Rook 8 or taking on C are the two logical move. And after Rook 8, I would say that Rook C1 is a very, very logical move to play here now because now Anna cannot go out with her queen. Her queen doesn't have any good squares here now. She could play, uh, she could play like this, Knight C4, but and now. Yeah, maybe now to go b5. Maybe even now to go b5 here. This could be, this is actually the plan I like for Anna. Knight e5, and maybe we take on e5 like this, and we go queen d5 or queen b6 or queen a5. So what did Anna play here? Um, c4 was play. Uh, let's see. Last moment, c4. Let's go back. Sorry. Let's go back here. And we can see. Uh, I hope Anna has some coffee at the board because even if it's, it's 11 o'clock Icelandic time, I just she, hope she has some coffee, she has energy for this game, she has got a position on the board which is quite unusual. Um, you can absolutely here go rook c8 and if her opponent start taking here, we take back uh, we can't, I thought we could take with the knight, but and the this, of course, if we go e4, we will jump further. So e4 would not be a good move uh, like this. Maybe, maybe actually it's better to take on c4. It could be that taking on c4 is good, and white wants to play this move. And yes, put the rook on the open file, and uh, if you go rook c1, I like this b5 plan. Uh, what did Anna play? She played 94. Yeah, um, 94. It's knight uh, b7 was played, c4. She went 94. Uh, this is absolutely fine. But after this move, what is she going to do now? Now she need probably to take back with a pawn. So, uh, but yeah, no, I don't like, I'm not sure I like this move so much. Maybe if she takes here, her opponent will take here. So, 94. I'm a little bit not liking that so much because I think this is a great move to play. If you play here, can we put some more pressure here on e2? I'm just wondering. Also, sometimes you have um, maybe, I don't know, if we start with rook c1. We can also put play here and queen on b3. It's looking a little, little bit like here, 
but it's difficult for Anna to make something active. And you sometimes have this plan, A4, A6, this minority attack. You have one pawn play against the two pawns. So knight d4, I wasn't so happy with when Anna played this. She wanted to bring in the knight to an active position because after this, she will get, if she takes here a look at the pawn structure, um, she is, this pawn is stopping here in the center, but um, if I manage to get f3, e4, uh, in, this could be as very good. She's blocking this bishop, uh, but but if she takes in another way, this if she goes like this here and now takes with the bishop, we can see that Anna is getting uh, to have a more passive position. Her opponent is getting to more uh, active position because this is a moving center. Her opponent will put the rook here. We will maybe come here. It could be her opponent will go a c a. a I go a4 and this is the plan just to put and this is a little bit awkward to play against we might do something like this but we don't have any way of entering and then this is coming and this is yes because white is just attacking this is quite nice for white to play so let's see what her opponent will play here now now um, her opponent Yunshin here from China and he is sank into fourth maybe he went to get some uh some water and we can see that anna has some key tea or coffee on the side besides the water and that i think is just very very good so this is the very very last round of this beautiful reykjavik open with 400 players and i'm also so amazed that these 400 players on all different levels they are all playing in one playing hall in the concert hall, concert hall harpa in um, in reykjavik and that's just so beautiful. So you can walk around and see all the games, uh, all the games in, in, in the tournament when you are playing, if you like to go up and look at the other's games when you are playing. And now after eight rounds, yes, Anna has four and a half like her opponent, and there are six players in the top, and there are six players in the top, and they are having six and a half out of eight and i believe they play against each other which means that it could be three players who win the tournament who will share the first place three players who could share the first place with seven and a half out of uh, nine when it's finished but it's this very exciting last game to go anna played this 94 now here but i'm not so happy about this move because what is she going to do if her opponent takes here what she will need to take back with the pawn I guess so. She will need, because she cannot take back with the bishop, she would actually lose the bishop. She could absolutely make an in-between move here and here and then go like this. She could play like this. But I'm just wondering, now a4 will be coming and her, she will have this pawn. You see, this is passive. She can come here. If the knight comes here, her opponent maybe will just, her opponent will maybe put the knight here. I don't know. Could we do something like this? And then later on, uh, we will we see this square is a little bit weak. Also, bishop a6 is coming. Maybe we go rook somewhere here. But I'm just wondering, could this be an annoying move? Maybe not, because we are getting some activities also. Sorry, this is not the right. But I'm a little bit... Uh, yeah, maybe this is still... Okay, rook c1. This rook is the wrong. Maybe we then can go rook d6. We can maybe catch move his back. Maybe it's not a danger, but I believe if her opponent take on d5 that Anna will need to take back with the pawn either directly, this is the position, either to take like this, this is absolutely fine, or to make this in-between move that you take a piece. There's no time for white to take here because Anna will take another piece with check and she will have a piece extra and not only a piece extra, she will have a king attack because it's so, so weak here. So let's go back. Uh, so her, we can also see that her opponent is thinking, he is looking, uh, was it a good move Anna play or is it a move that I maybe can take advantage of and uh, I just think that c take d5 is a good move. If you would go something like a4, I think Anna should just take here. What Would this be better or not? Or maybe now we have open um, the diagonal, maybe to go something like knight f6, but her opponent will absolutely be able to play e4 in some moments. So her opponent is getting this 
And this is the plan from the opening. He, the plan from the opening is actually for white, and we can see it already here. White has one, two, three, four, five, six pawns here in the center. White, black has one, two, three, five. So the idea for white is to have an extra pawn in the center to change this b4 pawn against Anna's c5 pawn. And this is what he also did. And we can see that her opponent played the moves very quickly, but also Anna played very, very quickly. Now she is back here. Uh, yeah, it, it's true. If you make this move, uh, you, you, we can say that, yes, you help white to develop the pieces because the queen is fine here. The rook is, uh, uh, the rook is, the, sorry, the two rooks are connected. They are a little bit speaking with each other, but they are ready to go to the best squares. And depending on what Anna would answer here, if she take with the pawn or if she take with the bishop, if she take with the bishop, I would say e4 this and maybe the rook on e1 would be good, but there's no pressure. She can also start this minority attack. And it's a minority attack because we have one pawn playing against these two pawns. And the idea is to make this pawn a weakness, not a strength, a weakness. And you keep your beautiful center here with a pawn on e4 and d4. So let's go back. Uh, let's go back. We have this this position at the board. It's quite very exciting. We are getting into the middle game, a very unusual middle game position, I would say. And uh, but uh, it's just very, very interesting. And the question is, was this a good idea to go 94 or should Anna have played something else? And if Anna plays, if, if Robin plays here, um, yes, Anna can take. And I guess her opponent will not take like this because here he will not be scared. Will we be scared of taking like this? I don't think so. I don't think this is such a big problem. You have this beautiful move threatening here and here. But after bishop e2, uh, rook c8, we will just go rook c1, I guess. And I'm not sure how, how this will be. There are some tactics, but white has the bishop pair. So we, black need to play with time, use the time to get activity. Otherwise the bishop pair will be strong, even with a pawn structure like that. So uh, let's see, <clears throat> white is thinking, oh, I'm sorry, I will take some water here. I will absolutely take some water now. So, <clears throat> And now we see her opponent is looking up, uh, looking up and uh, not at the board. And that is just quite common to see players do. And especially, I would say, very strong players that they, when they analyze, they can like to look, they like to look away. So they don't need the board for to analyze the position. <clears throat> they analyze it in their head and then they think it's easier for the it's easier to do it when you don't look at the board yeah anna is having a time advantage here but it just so early in the game it's just very very early in the game so anna has been speeding up and played quickly she has done that but her opponent has also played quite quickly they have made already 12 moves already 12 moves here so what will i expect her opponent to play here now uh yeah yeah i i, I c take d5 is absolutely a move her opponent could also go her opponent play a4 a4 was the move he played he played a4 so here we can see that anna's knight on c6 this would not be the plan to go a4. This was absolutely not be the plan to go a4 if the knight was a c6. But with this knight on b7, here you would actually stop this plan with a4, this minority attack. But now the knight on d7 doesn't stop it. And if you go a5 and we take the pawn, white will get this pawn back and will have can go late to c5 and have a beautiful pass pawn no after a5 is coming you cannot take the pawn so he played a4 he's just playing to um, he's absolutely his plans here i don't know now if anna goes something like rook c8 she could absolutely play it can we see can we take here now would this be a good move 
and we come here and maybe can we go something like a5 i'm just wondering but maybe in a position like this can we take it just to see if we can but knight b3 you know this knight this pawn is absolutely in the long run we will not yeah but we are getting some counterplay we get this beautiful square here we're getting this beautiful square so rook c8 is a natural move to play uh but it's maybe not so easy move to play what did anna do she's playing so quickly what did anna play here now what did she play i cannot see the move on the board i will have to put it up here uh what did anna play uh flip the board a4 was no a3 is not played ah this is the position ah a3 was a4 was not played i'm sorry i was i don't know why i was tricked by a4 it could be my own analysis i'm sorry for that so her opponent what did her opponent play he played i cannot see what he played here what did her opponent play he played knight e1 he played knight e1 is that true that he played knight e1 this look like a very very passive move uh, was it knight e1 or was it rook e1 i think it was knight e1 yeah and why is this a shocking move yeah the plan for him i i just want you to tell why he played this he wants to take he wants to take on e4 but at this moment if you take on e4 if you take with the knight black take ta back with the pawn and it's a fork you will lose a piece it's not possible and you're not very eager to take with the bishop to give the bishop pair here you really don't want to do this so even if you get beautiful pawns this pawn is in the way you have given the bishop pair and this knight mm, is not coming to a good square you wanted this to maybe to be c3 but why is the future it doesn't really have a good future so no this is not a good move so knight e1 came i'm just wondering can anna go some tactics here can we go something like this is this an idea we have this knight e5 bishop e2 and maybe rook c8 and what is the plan here with rook c8 we want to take the bishop pair you can go rook c1 but i'm just wondering here uh we can take on c1 can we go queen d7 i'm wondering do we have time for this and the idea is that we want to get uh no this is uh, yeah, this will absolutely. This would be a losing move, actually. Knight c4 is a losing move. I just want to show you why this is a losing move, because we have a fork and we also have a bishop, so we will lose a piece. Let's go back. Knight e1 was, and uh, what shocked me is it's clear the plan because knight e1. If white wants to move, white wants to take. Let's see. Anna go rook c8. White wants to. I think this is the plan for white and to go bishop e2 to play this position and i'm just wondering we have this we keep the bishop but this knight is also not in such a good place um it's not in such a good place could we even go some aggressive e5 with the idea to get maybe the knight we get bishop d6 we get a lot of squares but after e5 uh, black well white will not take it we will go queen c7 we will get this pawn back no i don't think so but uh, yeah so this is the plan for white the plan is to take on e4 but you don't have to take uh that you can take with a knight but look at this knight why is it going this knight doesn't have so good squares this knight would be it was well placed here on f3 later on you can get it to e5 here you can get it to c2 but it's still it's not in on a good route you don't you want the knight to be on f3 was good <clears throat> you had sometimes 95 control in the center it would be also good on c3 control in the center but on e1 it's just a very passive mode uh what it uh they are playing nine games in seven days a classical tournament with long time control and uh, it depends on what happens if anna would win she would get advanced in the tournament she will get higher up in the final standing so it depends on this last game what will happen uh, of course and uh, so, so it's just and anna she is among these 400 players from the beginning anna with her rating anna has 2115 she is rated number 106 in the tournament and this is just 
very beautiful tournament with plays on all levels. You have the grandmasters, you have some legendary plays, you have lots of streamers. Anna is one of those, and you have also a lot of amateur plays, some without any international rating at all and some with low rating but they are all playing in the same group and in the same playing hall and now anna sank into fort because this was absolutely i would say a very surprising move i couldn't expect that uh, her opponent go backwards um, but we see that this knight doesn't have such a good future. I like to take here. I like this to play like this. And I'm just wondering. Uh, yeah, I like this idea to take here. And that is a little bit to win time. We can also see uh, here, we see that the rooks are not connected. But okay, now the knight will get a better route. And this, and now the plan is, for example, if you go something f3 to go e4, we will go maybe queen d5 directly or i think we can also go knight c4 we just take we play a position like this you will have these beautiful pawns but this knight is very misplaced it's absolutely misplaced and with queen c2 you're not you are getting into problems we will go rook c8 or rook d8 probably maybe rook c8 or rook d8 i think rook c8 actually and using this um this open file with lots of activity so this is just a very very nice plan to play here now so um anna is st still thinking i think she do it absolutely uh, that this is very good yeah uh, so 95 uh, not at this moment but you could play like this knight taking the pawn you need to take it back and now you have 95 and you can see we are kicking this bishop but more the most important thing and we can see because the knight went down we have this maneuver the bishop has to gone away you can go here but here the bishop is hitting the wall probably you want to go here instead and now i like rook c8 could it be that we can go queen d5 also i'm just wondering but oh we have e4 this is no mate on the e g2. I'm sorry. I was getting a little bit too excited. Rook c8 is a normal move. We want to go knight c4. And if you play, I'm just wondering how a position, I don't know, is better to take or not. Queen takes. Hmm. And now bring this knight. Should it go to c6 or not? But this is about equal disposition. You can bring the knight to g6 and then try to get something here. But I'm I don't I'm not sure this knight is so good here and knight f3. I would say this is about equal. But it looks like uh, this is very tempting to play these forcing moves. And I'm just wondering in a position like this here, here, knight e5, bishop e2, rook c8, rook c1. Do we have time for something else like queen d5? We always have e4 because we cannot take it. We always have e4 and the idea is to go knight c4 again but e4 is a good move and because this i think e4 is good move and after this move we actually have queen d3 here we actually have queen d3 and we will have to play position like this which i would say it's about equal but maybe we can say now this is a weakness we're going to play against this weakness and if you play against our queen maybe i don't know if we need to do a6 or we just put our rook in a better position it's about equal this position maybe a little more pleasant for black this is just very far away the position is like this her opponent played knight e1 which was not the move i was looking at i think it's just a passive move the knight doesn't have such a good route the best route for the knight would actually be to go to d3 later and then come because on d3 the knight has is standing well but it means that you need to move away the bishop and after you need to you maybe you have time to put it on d3 but it's quite slow and we can see lots of players behind i think it could be we see some of the top players also behind i'm not really sure but there are actually six players who are leading with uh, six and a half out of eight 
and Anna she is having four and a half out of eight she is on plus one and she played a very beautiful end game I just hope Anna will take on d2 now here let's see but she could be she wants to play rook c8 but this is not a move I really like so much if you go rook c8 it's just putting the rook here it's, it's possible fine but if her opponent takes it so she'll uh, she takes this double pawn you have to come back here we see that this knight doesn't have a good route it cannot come to d3 maybe you will need to go f3 and uh just try to uh, open up the position with f3 I don't know but I don't know I don't think Anna will um, allow her opponent take on e4 which is you could you could absolutely do that so it's very logical and Anna doesn't have this in between move because we always go bishop take e4 so uh, if she wants to open up in the center she will need to take on d2 first She played rook to c8. She put. She played rook to c8. Uh, it's absolutely possible to play like this. If her opponent take on d5, Anna will need to take back with the e pawn. She will need to take back with the e pawn. This is absolutely fine. And then in a position like this, her opponent is going to have a pass pawn here. But the question is, if, who that who that then you see that this knight is just a terrible knight it doesn't have a good way to get into sorry I wanted to go knight c2 but I think we could go queen d7 we can go we can also go knight d5 I think maybe queen d7 yeah knight b4 is not such a big move we can just maybe quick uh, kick it back but we are this is this is actually a fine position to play uh, this is absolutely fine rook c8 uh, is one of the way uh, Anna is just saying that I don't mind your take on e4 I am putting my pieces on more active squares and if you take uh, uh, if you take if you take on e4 I will take a double get a double pawn but what are you going to do with this knight where is this knight going to be placed because it's just not well there on e1 so we could see I, I can I, I yeah I shouldn't go back so actually white would have dreamed of moving away the knight, bishop and then with the knight on f3 taking on e4 and put this knight on d2 that would be a better uh, a better way so if white could play knight e1 take e4 that would be better for white it's of course not possible because of these two knights this one is better placed it has a better they have more square to go to it's closer to the center a knight on d2 can go to c4 e4 f3 b3 it's just very well placed there it's absolutely very well uh, placed there so uh, this um so but this knight if you take on e4 and i think this was her opponent's plan i would be surprised if he doesn't play this and go bishop here and now i'm just wondering what anna can do could it be that she's going for e5 but knight c2 and we don't take we just keeping the position like this maybe here we're bringing in a rook to d8 what will happen do we get some activities here yeah we can all oh, this is fantastic b5 and what is happening the idea is after if you take here we will take on c2 we're winning a piece and if you go c5 we can see that there is a pin here we will just go knight take c5 and we win a pawn so let's go back um so rook c8 was absolutely fine and i uh, he hasn't played this this is the position anna put the rook to an active square she is uh, looking at c2 she's actually having a threat here i forgot to say that she's having a threat she is planning to take on d2 and then to take on c4 her opponent could defend this in this way he could absolutely do it defend it and in this way but again we have this very exciting way of playing and we could go knight d5 could we go knight c5 also i'm not sure uh, why we want to bring the knight to a4 and the only way to stop it we can see this is a pin you can never take here because we would grab the queen so it is a pin and planning here we can planning to come here so you need to go queen the one here and we bring the knight to e4 i'm not so sure uh, this is uh, how um, I, I would probably in a position like this I would like to go knight e4 
and we have bishop e2 and we have been looking at this but i would say that this is about equal this position and we want to go queen d5 but white has the little very good move e4 bringing the pawn to a better square be because we cannot take here there is no mate on g2 now finally this knight is doing good work it defends the, the, the defense against this because we have the knight here so you have time to take the piece and white would be winning so this is the position it's just such an exciting position here so we can see there are some tension in the center there are pawns looking at each other without exchanging there are some pieces looking at each other they are still staying there and these are the moments where i would say when you start off with chess that you when you see a piece you just want to exchange it but sometimes it's better to keep the tension anna has decided that she wants to keep the tension she is activating her rook to c8 so i would say what are the logical moves from from for white i would say taking on d5 is one taking on e4 with the knight is one and rook c1 these are the three moves i am looking at and i would believe her opponent will play one of these moves and to play a slow move like this would not be good because now anna absolutely have this idea going knight d5 bishop e2 and we can actually go bishop c4 and we can see whatever her opponent does take here and here we have equal number of pawns we have an active rook but we have the two bishops the bishop pair and we have seen this we have seen this we saw that actually was it her opponent play rook c1 so it's a little bit like but now i like again this idea to take on d2 so let's see rook c8 was played our opponent play rook c1 a didn't want to uh, make any decision and he was actually defending an, against the threat because in this uh, in this position Anna is threatening to take on d2 after queen takes she's threatening to take here I just want to make it quickly I forgot to do that you can go here and we take on c4 we win a pawn you cannot take it back so this is what uh, happened here now her opponent Anna with rook c8 she put pressure on c4 with rook c1 her opponent is defending the pawn on c4 And yeah, Anna is fully focused, like her opponent is also sitting there. And we can also see, you see with the clock, I told you before, with the clock you always see who are the one who is going to play. But sometimes it happens that you forget the clock and uh, also the clock is actually counting. So I think the clock is counting the most uh, when you are uh, playing. So uh, after 40 moves, you get this half hour extra. Ah, no, this, to play this move now. 95 now, oh, sorry, this was played. 95 now, uh, but you have bishop take e4. You would lose a piece here and then you take it. So it doesn't work. But 95, of course, if your opponent plays like this, we can play this. And we have a position like this. And again, we have the bishop pair. Actually, c4 pawn will be very weak because black will be able to attack it also with the bishop to a6. But 95 directly would lose a piece because you can just, uh, you, you don't take on e5 because this is the plan here, take on d4. But uh, here, this would actually be good for black. But in a position like this, after 95 we take bishop take e4 you need to take back and we take here and this is just a piece up for white so we have to be a little bit careful if we want to go 95 we need to clarify the position first we need to take off some pawns here first and rook c1 is also a move that is a little bit playing because now Anna, maybe she wanted to bring her queen here to c7. Why you want to bring the queen to c7? Yeah, it's actually because you want to connect the rooks. With this knight on d7, Anna cannot go up here. She could maybe play something like this to play rook e7. But uh, so this could absolutely be an idea. 
But with Queen, now Queen 7 is not possible because we would just take here. We take the pawn, but not only take the pawn, we are putting threats against the queen. And this rook is defended by the queen and by the bishop. So here, white would be winning on directly. So chess is like that. We can play so many beautiful moves, so many strong moves, but we make one mistake. And that mistake is so big that all the effort, all the good moves done before, it just it doesn't help, you will lose. So it, it's a bit cruel. It could be a bit cruel, cruel like that. So what, yeah, knight take d2 is still a good move. Knight f6 could be a possibility. Could it be that Anna wants to go bishop d6? Uh, and yes, the idea is to bring the queen to e7. Because with the queen to e7, one is that the rook are connected. They will speak with each other. They will be both be active. You can bring this rook to d8. But with the queen on e7, she will also try to put pressure on the pawn on a3. But white will be able to defend the pawn or to maybe move it further with a4. But when the rook now is here on c1, let's see, this is the position. With the rook on c1, this plan is not as strong any longer because the rook is better behind the pawn if you want to play this minority attack. But with the moves white has played, we could see that this was not uh, the plan for white to, 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 to play. So this is the very, very last round in Reykjavik Open. And when you play open tournaments, also also even in the Olympiad, uh, it's normal that the last round is an early round. Here it was at 11 o'clock Icelandic time, so it wasn't so bad for uh, the, the players, but it's anyway an early round. Normally they play at 3 o'clock, and 3 o'clock is actually very, um, it's a very common a time to play the games. It's actually a very common time to play the games uh, because it's the time, the, the official time where uh, most of the official tournaments are, uh, the, the tournaments uh, like World, Ch World Championships, Candidates Tournaments, the Olympiads, uh, all these tournaments are normally played at three o'clock and it's a good time because for the players, you have time to rest well, you have time to prepare, you have time for a very good lunch, you might even have time for a nap before you go into the game or to make some sport in the morning. So playing in the afternoon is the most common in, let's say, when you play uh, these official tournaments, uh, qualifying for world championships, or playing European team championship or European individual championships. But in an open tournament, and here we have seven games, no, sorry, nine games in seven days, then you have to speed up a little bit. And they have played two double rounds. And it's very normal that the last round is in the morning. So players who want to, they will be able to uh, go back home already today and save some time, maybe also save some some money uh, when you don't have to stay one extra night. So a morning last round is very, very typical. And I'm just happy for them that this morning round is at 11 o'clock. I think a morning round should not <laughs> start earlier than 11 o'clock. This is my own, uh, this is what I myself prefer. And we can see how uh, uh, they are both focused. And yes, Anna's opponent played a very, very unusual first move, A3. I saw a bit of a smile on Anna's uh, face when she saw that move, but it's, it's possible to play. And the idea was actually what we have seen to get the pawn to b4, the knight move the b pawn, so it's defended by a3. And then to have this, we see that white has one, two, three, four, five, six pawns in the center. Anna has one, two, three, four, five pawns in the center. And this was the plan for white. And we can see that Anna, she's not a pawn that she has this majority two against one. And of course, if we could move around and Anna would be able to get her queen to a5, a4, she would start pushing pressure on this pawn on a3. Actually, a queen to a4 without the white squared bishop could be very, very annoying for black. So, 
but here all the pieces are still on the board. We have only seen one exchange of one of the pawns. White exchanged the b4 pawn against the pawn on c5. And now we have this pawn structure. And when you're playing, always look at the pawn structure. Try to keep it healthy. The pawns are stronger together, but sometimes you are, you need to take, uh, you need to play with an isolated pawn. Sometimes you really need to do that and don't be scared of it. So let's see if Anna goes something. Yeah, she can go knight f6. Now, if you take here now, I guess we can even go queen take d1 uh, and to play this because we are keeping control here. So what did Anna play? I think, no, she played bishop d6, I think. This is what she did. She played bishop d6, I think, rook c1, and now, no, not knight f6, so, but she played bishop d6, and this is absolutely fine to play again. Her idea is actually to open up for the queen, queen to e7, and then the rook to be played, uh, the rook to be, and to play bishop to c, uh, sorry, queen to e7, and then to put pressure here, but also so the two rooks are connected. Yeah, it looks like Anna has taken her coffee. And I think, I just think you need to have, you need to drink and eat during the game, or at least to drink. Everyone is different. Some place don't want to drink anything, don't want to eat anything, but drinking is actually good. And if you feel tired, you can take coffee and tea, but also water, water, drinking lots of water. I would say it's good during the game. So Anna played bishop d6. So it's a little bit like Booth want to keep the tension. Booth is asking the other one, I want you to take away the tension. But both say, no, 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 we want to keep it. I'm saying, telling you that if you take on e4, this knight is going to be a very passive piece. So yes, you can go ahead, take on e4. I'm not worried about that. I will get the double pawn, but I don't, I don't mind that. But if your opponent take here on d5, uh, I want, I wonder, maybe we take, yeah, maybe we should take first like this and then go e take d5 uh, just to keep a uh, position like this. And maybe this, I'm not sure how easy it is to realize that this is actually a very good, oh, sorry, bishop c4 is a mistake because we have some threats here and we have a beautiful pin. This would absolutely, there's no way to defend against b5. You can go a6, but a4, we go a6 and b5 will be coming or, or queen c2 also, so queen c7. So let's go back, let's go back. Uh, Anna play bishop d6, this is absolutely fine, but she will need to be ready. If her opponent take on d5, she will need to be ready to take back with a pawn. So her opponent will not be able, if she, if you place like this, we come here, we, I think we should take this and we take here and here and we go bishop d5, I would say that e4 now, our opponent is absolutely fine because now this knight can also come back to f3, but it also can knight c2, knight d3, so it's getting into the game. And maybe this is about equal, but it could also be a little bit more pleasant for a white. Maybe even e5 is a good move. And the reason why e5 is a good move because this knight is not so playing so well. You want to get in b5, knight b6, but now you have the bishop instead. But you have a little bit of passive pieces, but it's absolutely fine to play this because this is also passive. No, I wouldn't say that e5 is a, such an easy move to play. But so let's go back. We will go to the game position. I'm sometimes getting very, very excited. Uh, Bishop d6 was played. Here we have the position. We are looking at it from the black side. And uh, what will her, what, uh, so she played. Now c take d5 is maybe, uh, this was not the best move, I would say. But Anna wanted to keep the tension. She wanted to be able to play queen e7. She didn't want to go for some forcing moves. And it's absolutely fine also to play like this. But she will need, I would say, she will need to play here and here. And now to go e take d5 to play like this. This is what she needs to do. Then she will be absolutely fine because this pawn is stopping two pawns and she has an extra pawn here. And we can see what is the best for white to do. It could be to go back here, but we go queen e7, a4. We bring in a rook in, maybe to c8. Maybe this is queen, I don't know, queen b1, something like this. And how is position like this? 
I'm not sure. It could be it could be about could it be about equal. It could be that Anna can use some initiatives. But we can see that the queen now you are planning to go rook c1 here also. So uh, I think in this position uh, she played bishop d6. Uh, will her opponent take on d5? Uh, I guess this is what you will do uh, because. Um, I think just to get back with the pieces, will he take here and Anna maybe take here back and she should just keep the tension like this. And now maybe just to go back with the knight and we have this position where actually white has lost two tempos. This knight is, uh, this knight was better in F3, but white went back. Could it be that white later on will uh, put the knight back again? So Anna played bishop d6, a little bit saying, what are you going to do? And I just think that uh, white should maybe, either one could be you bring him back the knight to f3. You just say, I understand, I made a mistake, and we will have queen e7, I guess, here. We will have a4, could we do that? I'm just wondering, do we want to play this? But maybe not, maybe this is a mistake to play, maybe this mistake, because this is passive, it could be, and this pawn is not of any danger. We have nice and free coming, but there's no danger. We can play in different ways here, but this is absolutely, maybe it's about equal, but white is not worse. It could be a little bit more pleasant, but maybe bishop b4 is a better way to put pressure. So we want to take on d2, and you will need to take back with the knight and get more passive again. So let's see what will happen here. Bishop d6 was played. It's with a very, very clear uh, plan. It's with a very clear plan and it's to put up the queen to e7. And also Anna, she has been playing quite quickly. I think she this is what she wants to do. She doesn't want to um, think too much to, to try to find very, very best move. She just want to keep the position be going to find fine moves, moves which are not making the position bad and not spending too time too much time because time has been an issue for her. It has been a problem in some of her games that she has been under pressure on the time and sometimes also on the board. In some games, yes, on the board too. And that had, I would say that at least maybe one of the games, the time was uh, uh, was uh, could have been one of the reasons why she made uh, a mistake there. So time is so important, but it's not easy to handle the time. I know it very, very well myself as I'm also, I, as I am a, a slow player. So Anna played bishop d6 quite quickly, and we see the tension is there, there in the center. This bishop looks at the knight, this knight looks at the knight, this pawn looks at the pawn. They are both keeping the center. Uh, they're both keeping the center like this. Will there be some exchanges in the center? Will there be some, what will her opponent uh, play here now? So, um, and of all the moves I've seen on the board, I would say that this was going back with a knight to f1 was the most scary move, not scary move, the most surprising move because the knight is very passive and the best square the knight has is actually to go back to f3. This is the best square uh, uh, white has in this position. Yeah, no, the queen is not doing so much on g5. If Anna, let's say we make a little move like a4. If you go queen g5, we will just kick it back and we will get this move for free. Ah, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe queen d6, maybe queen h5. Yeah, maybe it could be, but I don't know. I don't like this move so much, but it could be. It could be that it, that is possible. I just thought that if you go knight f5, where are we going to bring it? If you come down here, we have got knight f5 free, for free. So we need to keep the queen here. Yeah, maybe queen h5 to have some free threats here. Could this be a possibility? And we actually have a plan here. I just want to show you this plan. This is actually a tactic plan. I want to show you this and take here. And after here we have queen take h2. So it could be uh, a playing like this, but in a position here, white would have to go h3 just to stop the threats against uh, h2. Hmm. So bishop d6, it could be that Anna is planning, not, sorry, this is the position, bishop d6 was played, it's, uh, it's Anna's opponents, 
it's her opponent, Yun Shen He. He's from China. And in these nine games that Anna has played, she has played against players from eight different countries. She has actually played against two Swedish players. That's very curious to go to Iceland and played against Swedish players. And she has, after that, she has played against a player from India, a player from Norway, a player from Germany, a player from in, in US, a player from England, and a player from Turkey. And today she's facing a player from China. And this, you know, shows how international chess is. And I could see there were close to, or was it about 50 different countries represented there in Reykjavik. From Sweden, there are about 13 players. From Iceland, there are lots of players. I think there were also very many players from the US, like 30, or was it close to 40? So there are lots of players from lots of countries and chess has become very, very widespread. It's played in the most, most countries in the world. And um, so it's just, uh, just so nice uh, to, to, to see. And yeah, now they are, uh, yes, now they are uh, focusing both very much on the game. Yeah, Anna, uh, we were living in Spain uh, since I, un, until Anna was 11 years old. So she has played the under, I think she played the under eight, maybe under 10 uh, championships. Uh, and so, so, uh, so she played, uh, she was a Spanish player, but after we moved to Sweden, uh, a little later, she changed to Sweden because it's much more practical to represent the country where you are living in. And she has, in Sweden, she has played in the national team. She has played in the Olympiad. She has played in the European Team Championship for Sweden. And for me, this is so beautiful uh, for the whole family, actually, to play. Anna and I, we play together. And Anna's father, the grandmaster, Grandmas Juan Bayon, uh, he, is, uh, he has been the captain. So... Yeah, and this is why also when you have the knight, knight on f6 and f3, this is why we developed them to that because the knight on f3 is very good keeping control the center, but it's also good to defend the king. And actually the knight is normally the best defender of a king. If you can choose a piece uh, to have it close to your king, uh, it's normally best to have a knight close to your king. Of course, you like to have pawns in front of your king, so it's not open or too open but the knight is a very very good piece for attacking and what did her opponent play i i don't see what her opponent played did he took an e4 i think he took with a knight on e4 i think this is what he played could this have been i think so yeah i think he took an e4 he took that uh he took an e4 and then uh no he didn't take an e4 no he went he went f4 did he go? He went F4. Oh, but this, he went F4. And, but I want to tell you why he goes F4. Now his plan is actually to take on E4. Now he's planning to take on E4 because he got the pawn on F4. He played this very, very big move. But I would like to take here now and take here. I want to see, is it good? Maybe the go queen is seven. I wonder if he should take here and what are uh, you going maybe a4 how is the position like this uh do we want to go bishop here now but you can always go bishop before now uh this is getting some this is actually getting good because maybe we are getting some activities here i'm just wondering we are bringing in lots of pieces this is just getting very very good let's see here now he played f4 this was a very very big move let's see oh sorry i have to go back we put it on the live board he played f4 move and uh let's see flip we put it like this he got f4 and this was a little bit shocking move for me because you can see that this square uh, black is having a fantastic grip of this square but i think now his plan is to take on e4 and with the pawn on f4 his king will be more safe so the plan with f4 is that he wants to take the knight here next move so if anna plays something like this um, yeah probably then he will not take he will defend the pawn somehow and then he's planning to take but let's say anna play a little more like rookie eight i think then absolutely that he wants to play like this 
and go bishop e2 and now his king is safer with the pawn on f4 than it was on f2 so this would be absolutely an equal position this would absolutely be fine we still have this problem with the pawn we, not with the knight here but maybe this knight is maybe dreaming of knight c2 getting to d4 after a d5 but uh Actually, and this is what is good for black, that this knight is still very passive. It would be lump to be on d2 or on c3. It would be so much stronger there, but here. So the plan with f4, the idea with f4 is that he wants to take on e4 now. Now he's planning to take on e4, but he didn't want to do that before because he was a little bit scared of seeing the bishop looking here to h2. He was scared that there could be some attack and uh, but here with going f4 you can see that this pawn now is blocking here and now the plan is to take on d2 this is um the idea behind his move and um, yeah anna is absolutely fine i would say that uh, if white played the best in one moment white could have maybe maybe a tiny advantage but when white played this very very passive move knight e1 Anna is absolutely fine. Uh, she's absolutely fine. This is probably the best way to play here. Shall we take and just make something slowly here, a4. But if you go like this, we will just move away the queen here and then play knight f6. We have this grip. You can come out with a knight here. And I'm just wondering, yeah, we can play this position. And yes, we, we can have a position like this and knight e2. And how is this uh, going to be? We have, this is a weakness. This is absolutely a weakness. Bishop a6. How are you going to defend it? You are in big problems to defend it. You, are, you don't manage it because of the queen e2. We will just bring in queen b4. And we will have one, two, three, looking at c4. This is very, very long. But in a position like this, I like Anna to take on d2. Um, sorry, uh, this is the position it's like this f4 was played i would like her to take on d2 she could also start with this move because i don't think her opponent want to give the bishop pair this this is absolutely possible to play like this but now anna has the bishop pair and this knight still doesn't have a good route to get into the game so so probably anna will have to play f5 and knight f6 and it's very difficult for black to get a white to get a knight to e5, which white would actually like to have. So, um, yeah, so if Anna makes a move like this, I guess um, bishop d6, f4 was played, queen e7. I guess we will say a move like a4. And here Anna could decide that she want to take here. She can also play f4, but if she goes f4, I'm sure we will say f5, knight f3. And the question is, both of them are having a grip on the other uh, pawn. I don't know how a position would be like this. Would we play like this? Maybe this is just about equal. This could actually, this is maybe about equal. We see there are some squares here. And what did Anna do? I don't know what she played. I cannot see what she played. Did, I think she played knight f6. Could this be? No. I don't know what Anna played. I don't see. Uh, she played a rook to fd8. Ah, f4. What, no, she cannot play. What did she play here? I don't see what she played. Did she go? She went f5. She went f5. Um, f5 is absolutely one of the moves she could play. She went f5. And so she's getting... Uh, she giving the square on e5. I'm sure we will see this idea now. So maybe this idea, the idea with a white going with a pawn to white going with a knight e1 was not what I believe to take on e4. It was maybe to go f4 to play this position. And here I'm just wondering, maybe we, I guess, queen e4 looks so natural to play, uh, queen e2. We are actually not threatening to take this one because after this here, you will always have rook e1 coming back and we will play rook take a7. And this is still fine to play, but this rook has become very active. It would be about equal. So I just would say that it's not necessary to play like this. Absolutely not mm, for, 
for for black. So I think uh, I think we will see uh, Anna played f5. I think we will see knight f3 on the board, queen e7, and in a position like this, her opponent can her opponent play even this move? Maybe this would be a mistake. I'm just wondering because now we will be able to grab. We will have pressure against this d3, so you don't have time to go and take here. This is hanging here. You don't have, you cannot give it back. So I think that we will now see the knight to f3, and after knight to f3, I think we will see queen e7 here. I think so. Um, in a position like this, I guess our opponent will go maybe queen e2, if he just realized that this pawn is hanging, or maybe, maybe queen b3, but this looks, I'm not sure this is the right place to put the queen here. So, so f5 was played and Anna, yeah, Anna is having a time advantage. Her opponent plays so quickly in the opening, but I think he's on the way to play. And I think absolutely we'll see this passive knight coming to f3 and he will go, uh, this uh, just coming back in the game. I don't think we will see any anything happening here and I was just say that if you take here uh, you can do two ways I would say you could take on d2 and take back you can also take back here again because like we saw before if you're taking here we still have this big problem with the knight this knight is just so very very passive it doesn't get to the right route for it it would love to be I told you on d2 or c3 but on e1 it doesn't have a good future so uh, f5 was played, this was, and now her opponent is thinking, I'm so happy to see that Anna is, uh, she's playing quite quickly, she wants to be practical, and she played f5, she wants to keep the knight on e4, and I just think that what white wants to do is the same idea, bring knight f3 and knight e5. So this is what I think we will see here in the game. And yeah, this is, uh, yeah, Anna. Uh, she has the first round Anna played against the Grandmaster. It was Platon Galperin from Sweden, and he is rated 25.55. He's he was like 450 points higher rated than 440 points higher rated than Anna. But after that, Anna has played lower rated, and it's because she needed to score a little bit more of points so she will get higher up in the field. But among the players on the same points as her, she has always been on the higher part. And that's why she has played against lower rated player. So, but we have seen it's not easy to play against lower rated player either. It's not easy. Some players love to play against lower rated player. Some other players just prefer to play against high rated players because you feel that if you play against high rated player, you don't have any pressure. Then you just play the game and it's expected that your opponent will win the game. So it, it's different. Uh, but yeah, in this tournament, Anna played against eight players with less rate, rating and one player uh, who was um, 25 55 Galperin, and he's actually seeded number eight in the tournament. Yeah, uh, yeah, you could go. G4 is not a good move because I guess we just would take it and we would absolutely grab it. We have a pawn more. This would not be a good. So plan H3. You could plan H3 here, but I don't know. Hmm. Do you really want? And the plan could be to go G4, but I don't think so. I just think because here you're giving some, uh, you're giving some squares for the pieces. I guess we will have Queen E7 coming, and now we have some threats here against. I think this is just what we are threatening now just to take the pawn so after f5 queen e7 is absolutely a plan for anna to play here now queen e7 and she's sometimes she's threatening to take the pawn sometimes not it depends on what her opponent has done but we can see this piece is quite active. I don't know, this is actually a passive pe pe piece because it stands behind the d4 pawn. But if the d4 pawn will come away, it will manage to move further to d5. It will manage to move away somehow. Then this bishop will open up. And we can see that when you open, 
uh, the F5, it will get weak. With the rook enter the seventh rank, that would be very, very dangerous. But also Anna, she has this bishop, it's behind the d5 pawn, but if, and this d5 pawn can always come off, that is looking at g2. And if she later on will open up the diagonal and she get the rook to the seventh, this could be lots of threats against the white king. And this is one, one reason why we always have to be a little bit careful when we're moving the f pawn. But in some position is possible. This is also possible because there is no rook coming to, there is no rook coming to c2, yet g2 is also well defended and then you can also put a knight on f3 so you are blocking this diagonal. So Uh, queen e2, but yeah, if you go queen e2, I guess we, maybe we can take here. You are just losing a bit of time, but can we go queen e7? And now you have knight f3, because we remember take here on a3, this pawn on a7 would be lost here. You can absolutely play like this, but I like this idea. And in a position like this, we see white has this beautiful e5 square, black has one and two, and this is, it, it's, I guess it's about equal, but we have, this is a backward pawn, this is also a backward pawn, but this pawn is just very, very, uh, this pawn is in the way for the bishop. So I would say here that why black would have one, two, three active pieces, white would have one, two active pieces, the rooks are also getting active, this one is active, this one is active, but this bishop is still passive, standing behind the pawns. So uh, Anna played f5, uh, and the let's see, her opponent will he flip the board here, and I don't think he will take on um, here to take on f5 here because now we take back with f pawn, and the bishop has to go, and we can see that um, that this knight still has a bad um, route. It still has a, it doesn't have a good route to get into good square. We would just start putting pressure here. You would need to go something like that. And maybe we go knight f6 to put it more open. And where is this knight going to go? Maybe you need to go knight c2, but it's getting a little bit, I don't know, bishop d5. This is just getting and, and if you take here, I guess we will yes, we can take even with the knight to play for tactics. Maybe we can also take with the pawn, but uh, maybe taking with the knight is better because we are playing for peace activity. So, and there is not easy at all to attack this pawn while this. And now the plan for black is just to double the rooks to put pressure, to put pressure on, uh, on the C line. Maybe double the rooks with rook C6 and rook C8. Let's go back. Uh, let's go back to the position. The position is here. We flip the board. Anna played f5. She, her opponent, is thinking now. He is having 52 minutes. Anna has still one hour plus the 30 seconds she will get for every move, and uh, she will. Uh, be, Anna has made 14 moves. She has made 14 moves as well as her opponent. Her opponent is with white, and he's thinking of his next move. So. Uh, they are playing classical game and after, so after, if the game will be long, they will make 40 moves, after 40 moves, they will get, and he took, he took with a knight on e4, he took with a knight on e4, and now I would say f take e4 is just the best way to take back. So he's following his plan, his plan with knight e1 was to get, um, uh, with knight e1 was to move away, uh, the knight to play f4 and then to take e4. So he's playing f according to the plan. The best is actually now to take again with f pawn. This is absolutely the best to do, but it's not it's so easy because maybe you want to take to move open up this more, but this is a better way because sometimes later you want to take maybe on c4 and you will get this d5 uh, square to play for. So I would say that f take d if, if e4 is better. And also like this, we are keeping this bishop block this bishop is absolutely out in the way and also if you try to come here this pawn and this pawn is in the way so this bishop needs to be active on this diagonal or somewhere here but it's so far away from that so this is a position her opponent finally took on e4 and we can see that he uh, I would actually um, he took on e4 now and 
one of the problems with this move is that um, Anna should take back with the F pawn. And like this, this bishop hitting the wall, she will be, she's challenging this pawn still. It might be that she wants later on to take on c4 that she later on wants to take on c4 and she will get this beautiful square for a knight or a bishop so f take e4 is the right way to answer f take e4 is absolutely the right way to answer here for anna but if she goes here it will be about equal sorry this was taken and we could see her opponent wanted to keep if she takes like this bishop e2 this would be about an equal position we will have will he go maybe queen b3 i'm not sure this is the best and i'm just wondering can we go something like this no maybe now now he has this plan with a4 so maybe even this is the best move but how can we ever play anything like this the idea is after knight c2 we have knight c6 and you will need to go bishop c3 and but you always have these things coming i would say that black will white will be absolutely fine here so i just hope anna she played f5 because she wanted to take back with the f pawn. She wanted it to defend here because otherwise she didn't have to go f5 so early. Uh, so I really do hope she go f take e4 to play against this bishop, also to be able to challenge the pawn on c4 and also to stop the d4 pawn. This is just a very important moment. This is just a very important moment. Her opponent has taken a piece. Anna is just now a piece down. So she needs to take back the piece. She can only do two things. She can you take, uh, either she take with the f pawn or she take back with the d pawn. These are the only things she can do. Oh, calculating the ELA, there is a system for that. I don't know it so well, um, but when uh, when you're playing an opponent with the same rating as yourself, so let's see, I'm 2440 something. If I play against someone with 2440, if I have a very slow car because I have um, have had more than 2,300, more than 2,400, I'm not sure about where it changed. And so I play with K10. It means that if I win a game against someone my level, someone with my rating, I would win five points. For Anna, I think it's actually 10 or 20 points if she wins a game with someone against her rating. If she win a game against someone with less rating, it depends on the gap between them. And there are some tables to calculate it but I don't know them, absolutely not. So, so this was played, knight take e4, and we can see that her opponent is playing according to his plan. He's sticking to a plan. And I remember, I think it was Bent Larsen who said, it's better to have a plan than not, it is better to have a bad plan and then not to have a plan at all. So having a plan is, is fine, but let's see now if Anna will take back the right way, she will have an advantage she will put pressure on her opponent and it's so important to stop this d4 pawn to be coming further it's also very important that she can challenge c4 pawn and her opponent didn't want to take with the bishop because was scared that c4 would be coming weak and also you don't want to give the bishop pair so early so finally he took on e4 and this is what he was planning he was maybe even thinking of taking on e4 earlier but he didn't want to do that before he put his pawn on f4 and now he did that so he gives anna a double pawn but sometimes this is no problem to have a double pawn let's see if anna will play the best let's see if she will find the absolutely best way of taking back here now and i would say that this is not so easy uh, this is something we're learning by playing the same kind of position but in lots of time with this pawn structure when both of them have given a hole her opponent give a hole on e4 anna's have given a hole on e5 is better to take back with the f pawn and it's a little bit a rule we have this take towards the center but every position is unique in some position it could be better to do it other in another way but after this this is the best way and the reason is this d4 pawn cannot move Anna is shelling the pawn on c4 she can in some moment get a beautiful piece to d5 if she takes the other way back if she takes like this only way to challenge this pawn is to sacrifice with b5 and her opponent will also have this possibility later on and you can see 
how this bishop is coming into into life and this one is now stuck here behind the pawns so this is a very important moment i do hope anna will take some time and i do hope she will take back with the f pawn and i think behind anna and her opponent we can see i think it's anna's opponent from the first round uh, Platon Galperin, he, he is um, the grandmaster uh, Anna played against in the first round, who actually played the cow opening against Anna, and the cow opening won the game. Yeah, you're open to fight, but more than anything, because this rook is hitting the wall, but more than anything is that you are stopping the deep pawn, you're keeping a pawn on the center, and you are challenging this pawn here. So this is absolutely the best to play. After a moment like this, I don't know, I like queen e7, but queen e7 maybe it's not so good. Can we go queen b3 here now, and we go knight f6, and what, and we now try to play rook c7 you can go a4 here i'm just wondering here but then we go bishop a6 and we are putting pressure here i don't know about a5 here we we can even go b take a5 because this is not possible so you will need to uh you will need to defend your rook maybe you defend it the bishop like this and after a move like this i'm just wondering we are getting some very very heavy tactics here oh this is yes i'm just wondering what is happening we will actually we are going to win a whole piece but this is very very far away but it's so important she plays the right move here this is absolutely and it's not i would not say it's easy to make the right decisions and this is like in chess we have all these decisions making and if you always would make the best move we would be world champion we would be so strong but we are human and we are learning from the games we are playing so but there is this rule taking toward the center and i would also say in this kind of pawn structure it's normally better to take with the f pawn but it's not easy because with the f pawn anna will keep these two still blocked but this is absolutely the best way to play stopping d4 pawn challenging c4 pawn she needs that so she has some pressure on the pawn on c4 and this is one of these critical moments where you need to think you need to think and hopefully make the best decision and uh, what um yeah grandmaster know when master they would of course know what is the best natural way to take back i guess lots of them would know that but you need to feel this is critical if i go make the right decision i will have a good position if i make the wrong it might be it will be about equal i would actually also be a little bit scared that white has a has a future has a better future because these two pawns will be uh mobile they will absolutely be mobile and be able to uh so special d4 pawn will be able to come further not the c4 pawn so so anna she sank into fox and uh, foot and i think that is good uh she had had her coffee here we see uh galperin he's walking around thinking of the game he had a brief look at anna's board but then he went away and we can see also Anna's opponent is getting up maybe to get something more uh, for energy or just a little bit to walk around to get more energy. <clears throat> so, uh, so that's what I want to say, having double pawns are um, sometimes no problem at all sometimes they are weak and a double uh, um, isolated double pawn can be weak but in anna's case if she would take here and come here you could do something like i don't know we can even start with bishop a6 putting pressure here because of in a position like this we will take back i guess maybe we will take here and go c take d5 she doesn't have a double pawn but she has the pawn on white squares this is very good and this bishop is a black square bishop so this one is passive her opponent will absolutely have to go a4 some moment she will go knight f6 and she we still have this big problem with this knight we will just bring out the pieces and i don't know sorry maybe queen d7 would be better and after that to bring 
the rook to c8. So this would absolutely be very, very good. So this is very, very critical at the moment. I just hope Anna will play the best here. I really do hope she will play the best in this position and it is to take take back. And it could be that Robin got surprised Anna is thinking so long, but she hadn't made up her mind and she see that taking with one pawn or another will change very much the pawn structure. And the pawn structure is very important when we make our plans. We need to see that we have tried to have a healthy pawn structure. If we don't have a healthy pawn structure where the pawns are together, we need to have peace activity. We need something else to compensate that. And so here it will be so such a dramatic difference depending on how Anna takes back. So it is very, very crucial how she play here in this moment. And this is why she's spending some time. She has been spending maybe close to 10 minutes here after knight take e4. Yeah, Nana is a little bit lower on time, but they have played 15 moves, I guess. This is, no, they have played, um, they have played, her opponent has played 15 moves. Anna, this is her 15 moves she has to play. So it's not so slowly. It's just such an important moment here to see what she will do now. Oh, she's on her way to move. I think so. Is she on her way to move? And uh, no, she hasn't made up her mind yet. She hasn't made up her mind yet. And uh, she is taking a little bit of something to get energy because, uh, yeah, it's, it's just one of these moments. It's just such a critical moment and she feels that. So she takes something to get energy. I just hope she had a good breakfast, that she had a lot of food before the game so she can keep the game because this game can be going for three, four, five hours. Anna in the fifth round, she played the game for five and a half hours. So that was just so amazing. Yesterday, I think it was four, maybe four and a half. So it was quite long also. So Anna is playing in Reykjavik Open. She's having four and a half out of eight. She's playing the last round together with all these 400 players. They're all playing the last round to decide who will win the tournament. There are six players on six and a half out of eight. So there could be three players sharing the first place. Anna, she's having four and a half out of eight like her opponent. And yeah. And this is a classical oh, tournament. Oh, I'm getting so nervous now. I'm getting so nervous. Will she take back? Uh, will she take back the right way? How will she decide? Uh, she hasn't made up her mind yet. And this is still fine if she thinks, but I just do hope that she take right back the right way. And I guess we have to try to think like one is normally take back toward the center. Uh, the other one is, I told you before, this one will not be able to move and there will be pressure on C4. So that is why it's better to take back with F pawn. And also when Anna went F5, I guess this was a way of saying that I want to take, I want to be able to take back with F pawn, but she hadn't made up her mind and that's why she is still thinking here. Now she's back fully, fully focused. And Anna, so this is the last round. Anna will play, um, her next tournament will be very, very soon actually. She's going to play on Menorca. Menorca is a less well-known island than Mallorca in Spain. And she's going to play there in one and a half week. It will also be an open tournament. It will be an open tournament again with nine rounds. Nine rounds is very typical to play with because with nine rounds you can play for norms. And if you make three norms of, let's say you make three, three norms of um, IM norms, you will get the IM title if you get your rating up to, I believe, 2,400. And you, there are lots of different norms. Anna, she is a woman FIDE master. You can become woman international master. She could become woman grandmaster. You can also become FIDE master and uh, international master and grandmaster. So we have these titles for the open class. 
which everyone can play for, but there are also titles uh, in the, for, the, for the women. And it's because there are still so few women playing and it has been a way of encouraging the women to play, to, to have both women titles and titles in the open class. So Anna will play on Manorca uh, starting in only one week and a half. So it's coming quite soon. And that is also a, a beautiful open tournament There will be I think there will be so many grandmasters. Could it be 100 grandmasters? I don't know how many players there will be. I don't know that yet. But it will be like Reykjavik Open. It will be a very strong open tournament. Um, Anna, um, for to become a woman international master, I don't really know the average rating. Um, but you will need to play against at least three players who has the title, Women International Master. They can have that title or they can have a higher title also. So in an open tournament, also playing against a men player, uh, you can absolutely get um, uh, the, the Women International uh, norm, uh, absolutely. So you need to play against a certain average of rating, you need to score certain points, and then you need to have a rating. And I don't know if she needs to have 2150, 2200 or 2100. I don't know this so well, I'm sorry. So yes, Anna is thinking of both ways. She's thinking of because she has only two moves and it could look crazy. You have only two moves. She has been spending 15 minutes, but it's so important how she will play here. It's so important. So uh, how she will ha play here. If Anna gets five and a half points, she will get the same points as last year. And if that will be better or not than last year, I don't know, because it depends on the average of her opponent. If the average has been higher this time, then it would be a better result. If the average is less, then it would be maybe a little worse result. So it depends on that. But I know if Anna would win today, she would be so, so happy, so whatever. But this is a tough game going on. Still, we are in the middle game. Anna is spending 50 minutes and she has only two moves to choose from. Her opponent took her knight and she needs to take it back. And she has one good way to take it back. The other way, I would say that the position would become about equal, but white would also have some good prospects. So I wouldn't like her to take with a deep pawn. I do wouldn't like to her to take with a deep pawn. Uh, and she's taking a lot of time but she feels that that this is an important moment and this is what we should remember that when we feel there is a critical moment we should take the time because and especially when we are playing with um yeah no i guess in lots of position but also with the pawns because taking back with one pawn or another would change the pawn structure dramatically would change it very much and that would mean that the plans we will choose afterwards will be very different uh, no, th there is no woman rating. We all are in the same rating list. We all are having the same uh, way of calculating uh, the ratings and everything. So there is not a, a specific woman rating. No, it, it's not. There are women uh, titles. There are different. There also exist uh, women tournaments. And again, this is because there are only about 11% of all players who are female players. So this is a way of getting more players to play. And I can see that it has gone up. There are much more women playing than when I was in my youth. And I'm just so happy, happy to see that. And actually, uh, speaking about women, we had a very young uh, girl from, uh, she's from Russia, but she's playing under the FIDE flag. And she yesterday, she won against a legendary player, Vasily Ivanchuk. She won against this legendary player yesterday. I haven't seen the game. I don't know what has happened. I only saw the result. So, uh, and she's young. I guess she's around 20, maybe a little more than 20. I don't know exactly the age. I just play with her with um, some Bliss and Rapid uh, Championship. I think I played with her in the word Rapid Bliss, but uh, not in any classical game. But she won against Vasily Ivanchuk, and Vasily Ivanchuk is, is a legendary player. He was, uh, maybe he was rated number two in his best days. He never became world champion in classical game, but I think he won either the Bliss or the Rapid or maybe both. And he's just such a fantastic player, really fantastic. And he's not so young any longer, he's around 55, but he still keeps on playing. And Vasily Ivanchuk, he is from Ukraine.
So uh, Anna is still thinking. She has spent 20 minutes and I let's see if she will get to move here now. It's so, so important. It's so, so important she make the right choice. But she has spent 20 minutes and I remember how um, English Grandmaster Yonan said, I think it was him who said it, maybe it's lots of players saying that, but when you have spent 20 minutes, you should actually make the move because you will just think the same thing over and over. So your decision will probably not be better. It's possible that you already have made the decision. You just calculating and you what you want it to work. So that could be the case. So don't spend normally more than 20 minutes on one move. Then it's just time to work, time to make the move because you, you will not uh, found anything new. Probably you will probably just keep on calculating the same things over and over again. Yeah, Anna is getting down. So this is we do the down on time. So this is the decision making, which is so hard. And when you are one who can take quick decision, it will absolutely be good for chess because if you can play the same moves, yeah, quicker, you would put pressure on the clock. And we can see how Anna has been under pressure on the clock in some of her games. I just hope this will not happen here today, but mostly I do hope she play F take E4. It's just such a good move. But let's see, if D take E4, we would have about an equal position. If Anna take with the F pawn, she would have putting pressure on her opponent. She would absolutely putting pressure on her opponent. And is she going to move here now? I don't know. She hasn't fallen asleep. I'm sure she hasn't. She looked very fully focused, but she hasn't made up her mind. And she took with the F pawn. Oh, she took the right way. She took with the F pawn. Oh, I'm so happy to see that. It's such a good move. And the logic behind this move is that this D pawn is not moving. This D pawn is not going anywhere. We can challenge this C4 pawn and we can even sometimes damage our pawn structure and taking on C4 because this one will be weak, this one might be get weak, but we have a beautiful square on d5. So she played f take e4, she spent some 20 minutes, that was quite a lot. I do hope this will not be a problem for her in the game, that she, in the game, sorry, I get so excited, that she spent so much time. But f take e4 was a very, very good move. It's the most logical move, but I would say, it's not, if you don't play this kind of pawn structure often, it's not so easy to know. Should I take with the F pawn or should I take with the D pawn? Because we can see D5 here is blocking um, the bishop. So this bishop is now not getting to G2. We were speaking about this earlier on and I could have chosen to, to, to open it up, but she played this and now her opponent only has one more move. He needs to go bishop here, I would say. He could bring the bishop here, but uh, I guess Anayas can take. She will just grab the pawn. I don't know which way, one way over another. And here, this pawn would absolutely be, I don't know, can we go something like d5 here? No, we will also start putting pressure on e3. There are getting some very, very good uh, tactics here for for black. So no, we don't want to play like this for white. So let's go back. Her opponent only has bishop e2 and this came automatically. This came uh, automatically. And now I would expect Anna to go queen e7 because queen e7 is very logical move. You're putting pressure on a3. You're also getting the two rooks to play against each other. And after this move, how is her opponent going to defend the pawn? Are you threatening to take the pawn? Yes, we are threatening to take the pawn. Let's see her opponent make some uh, yeah, what more? We are threatening to take the pawn because after taking a free, I just want to make a little move. So you see that this, I think this is absolutely a threat because after rook a1, we will have queen e3, we check, we take another pawn. And when the king goes away somewhere, we can defend. Maybe we take on f4, we can also defend on a7, but we would absolutely be two pawns up, no. So now Anna is having a threat to take on a3. Her opponent could defend it like this, but if her, sorry, this is here. Uh, if her opponent defend the pawn with knight c2, I guess we have d takes c4 and we are having a pawn up. These pawns are not such a strong pawns, 
But e4 with a knight on c2, you cannot attack it. This bishop need to get on g2 to attack it. And Anna will be able to defend with knight f6. And she gets this beautiful square on d5. So this would be very nice for Anna to play. So bishop e2 was played quickly. This was absolutely a good move. It was a must move for her opponent to do. Going back and now defending c4 pawn. And we can see in this uh, why is this better for black? And I would say because of this knight. I think this knight is just uh, in such a bad uh, position, uh, the knight on e1, uh, because uh, it, do and it doesn't have, if you try to move it around, where is it going to go? It wants to be on d2 because uh, you have a better d2 or c3, you will put pressure. But with this pawn, this pawn on e4, it's a double pawn, but it takes this good square. This knight cannot go to f3, it cannot go to d3, it can go here, but after knight to c2, it's not going any further. It can't go to d4 and probably it can't go to b4. And if it comes to b4, we will just kick it back very, very quickly. So let's see. Anna played. This was played. F pawn was played. Bishop b2. I just like Anna to go. Queen e7. And she has a beautiful position here. And after queen e7, I was, if this move, maybe queen a4 could be possible. Is this, I'm just wondering what could be happening here. What is happening? We can go something like this and we have a little bit a6. We could also in a position like this, maybe we can go, can we go a6 directly here? I'm wondering, maybe we could, but this is not such a good move. It's better. I will show you why, why it's not such a good move. Because if you go a6, her opponent should go queen b3 and we don't any longer have bishop a6 here now we will need maybe to go something rook c7 and try to put pressure here so after queen a4 this is absolutely the best and if you play something like this i guess maybe we will just bring up the piece here to more active square and and we can see that her pieces are not not so well um, the, the pieces for white are not so well. Maybe you would try, I don't know, can we try knight c2 here now? But there could be some, I don't know if we even can go a6, but we will go queen b3 then. And this a6, I just want to show that you never can allow to get into the pin. We have a pin like this. But queen e7 is the move I am expecting Anna to play. It's just yeah, such a logical move to play. She took back here just to put pressure here on e7, to put pressure on e7. And uh, let's see what will her opponent play. After queen a4, she can take here. She's not scattered this because I think we will go bishop b4, maybe even bishop a6. And we are threatening to win the queen. We are threatening to win the queen. After a move like this, this would be a way of winning the queen. So what did Anna play? She played something else. But what did she play? I don't see. She didn't go out. She played. What did she play? I don't know what she played. She played G5. Oh my God. She went for G5. Oh, Anna, she went for G5. I don't know. I don't like this move so much. She went for G5. Um, this is getting a little bit scary for me. She went for G5. Why is this scary? I'm wondering, can we do something like this? But then we take on F4. No, I don't think so. After E take F4, yes, because the queen is coming. So queen B3 is actually a very good move here. G5 was not the best. It was absolutely not the best. Anna want to play, but I guess her opponent will go G3. I think this, but now her king is more weakened. And I don't like this, even if the pawn is on D4, because it could be that sometimes you can go C5. Her king is just getting more weakened here. I'm not so happy about this. And if Anna would take here on F4, her opponent would take like this, and all of a sudden the knight would have a beautiful square. So G5 was a very ambitious move, but I don't like G5 because her king is open up. And we can see that sometimes you could even go c5, giving a pawn just to open up. The pawn is much better on g7 than on g5. So Anna, she wants to play some activity, something, some very, very active move, but this is absolutely not the best. She, you can go like this, I guess, if you take here, we will take back maybe like this, e take d5. And now this position is only about equal 
because uh, she doesn't want to take an F4. If she takes an F4, she will get this beautiful knight to E3 where it will become very, very active. So I would say now that Anna after G5, she is actually not better any longer. I expect Anna to go queen in seven to play on the queen side, but she wants to play on the king side. And I think this is not a good way because after g3, later you can take on g5 and you get this knight here to f4. No, I don't like this so much. You will need to go maybe h6. So after a move like this, you can always take back with a pawn. So you're stopping the knight to coming up. But this king is getting much weaker like this. It's absolutely doing. Can her opponent take here on g5? I don't think so. We will take it back. He went g3. This was absolutely a very good move. g3. And now he's planning to take and go knight g2. So I would say that Anna needs to go either queen e7 or go h6. So g3 was very, very much expected. And this would be a mistake. Her opponent will take like this. And now finally, the knight will come to e3 and her opponent will get the better position. So g5, no, I didn't like that. After e3, I like this little move because her opponent is coming out here with the knight and I want it always to be a pawn taken back on g5. So this is what I would like her uh, to play. What did she took on f4? And this is a big mistake. This is a mistake. Um, so I wouldn't say big mistake, but it's mistake. Yeah, this is a big mistake because if her opponent take back with the e3, we remember this is a pass pawn. The best way to play, the best way to uh, this is the position. The best way to block a pass pawn is with a knight. And now finally, this knight is coming to e3. I would say now that white is better here. Now white is absolutely better in this position because uh, we could actually get, and this is a little bit scary. Anna, we, we look at the pawn structure. If black takes on d5 here, white, white takes on d5, we will have one, two, three, and only against one. There will be two pawns more. Anna will have one pawn more here, but that one is not doing. And her blocked pawn here would be actually, um, and would be blocked with a knight. I'm sure her opponent, after taking on f4, he will take back with the pawn. He will take back. He will take back with the pawn, but he will absolutely take back with the e pawn. This is what Anna is hoping for. Now she would be better. She could actually run with her king here because after the check here, she could come here and uh, she she could absolutely play this. But he will absolutely take back with the e pawn. This is clear because and after that, taking with the e pawn, white will be better because this knight will finally find a good square. And the knight is, we said that the knight is a very good piece for attacking together with the queen. The knight is a very good piece for the defending uh, the king, but the knight is also the best piece for blockading a pass pawn. And maybe this is what you think, and does he dare to give Anna a pass pawn? But this pass pawn will only be dangerous when we get into the pawn end game. Then in the pawn end game like this, this would absolutely be very good for Anna, the pawn end game, because she would have one pass pawn here. She would have one pass, get one pass pawn over here also. So that would be, um, that would be uh, probably fine uh, if, uh, yeah, that would absolutely probably be fine for her. But we are very far from that. So many pieces on the board. This is the position. If her opponent takes with the G-pawn, here we can, he takes with the G-pawn, uh, uh, Anna will, it's still absolutely fine. But if you take back with the E-pawn, I, I would say that white is getting uh, the better position. And he did that. He find this very, very good move. He took back with the E-pawn. And now uh, Anna is actually uh, has helped her opponent to find a very good square for the knight. So she has opened up the king. The knight is coming g4 here. She is actually getting, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit worried here. She doesn't have a way to break this up any longer. So now this is what I said before. The advantage in Anna's position was that this knight was not playing. Now this e3 square is available. So the knight is coming knight g2, knight e3, and it will put pressure on Anna's center. You also have these pawns which might be able to move. So I would say that Anna is just having a bit of problems here. We could see this here. I don't think Anna will play this. Could we see something like queen b3 here? This uh, knight f6 and knight g2 and white again uh, is getting a very fine position. White is absolutely better here. So now all of a sudden 
uh, Anna has helped her opponent and this is getting uh, more dangerous for her. This is absolutely getting more dangerous for her. So I don't know what to play here. I guess we will see a move like queen e7, but queen b3, what can she do? She can go queen e7 if she wants to, but we just go knight g2, defending everything. And we don't see, you see this king on g8 is weak. This pawn on d7 is weak. And yeah, I'm just, and white has this majority. Anna has an extra pawn here. She has an extra pawn on d5, but she cannot do anything with her pawns. She doesn't have any pawn play any longer. So. Um, while white has a long term plan of getting these two pawns moving, but he will, will move away with the king from, he will have to move away with the king first. But he has, he can sometimes even take on d5, maybe, maybe, and then he will have three against one. And we just show you, let's see, Anna go knight f6. Uh, no, this was a queen of seven. Let's see, we have a position like this. And we look only at the pawn structure. You can see that is one, two, three, playing against poor, uh, just against one pawn, a little pawn, a pawn here, and three against one. This is very good. Anna has an extra pawn, but with a knight on e3, it will be absolutely blocked. So this is getting a bit scary now for Anna. This position is absolutely getting uh, scary for her. And I don't see a way of playing actively now after this. So Anna made an active plan, but it was too active for the position. Instead of getting a lot of activity, she was creating weaknesses in her own position. You can see this king is very weak, and sometimes even a move like this could be hanging. It could be in the air, actually. It could be in there sometimes. Not yet, just, and the idea is, not, of course not now because there are checks, but it could be in the air. So now, uh, and also, it's not only she has weakened her king side, she has given this knight a beautiful square on e3. The knight is coming back into the game and she doesn't have good squares. She, yeah, she can play knight f6, knight g2. She can take here on c4 and play maybe knight d5. But then now e4 pawn is coming. Um, and actually, we have the check here and we just grab this pawn. It's not possible. She, because without the e pawn, e4 pawn will become, without an e pawn for white, e4 pawn will become weak. So this was, um, yeah, this was absolutely not what I hope Anna would play. I'm also happy she took back with the f pawn, but the following up was probably what she was planning. And that was a very aggressive plan, but it has created weaknesses in her own camp and it has helped white. Absolutely, help white a lot. And now white is having an advantage in this position. And also I don't see a good way for Anna to get active play and a longer in this position. Before she had an idea to play on the queen side, just keep the king side like it was. Now this is so much more difficult to play. We can see how her opponent is going up. This is the only game they played today. They played two double rounds last Saturday. They played two double rounds on Monday but they play the day uh, two days ago they play one game yesterday was one game and today this morning round at 11 o'clock icelandic uh, time is the only game and this is very typical because it's the last game of the tournament you want the last game to finish earlier you can also see that lots of players in the last round they are fighting they are playing long games and that's why because this the last round will design the final result of the tournament. So there is normal, very, very much fighting spirit in the last round. You really like to finish the game, to finish the tournament with something happy to remember. It, sometimes it could be that it doesn't matter what happened before, but when you finish the tournament with a result you're happy with, it could be you're saving a bad position, you get a draw, you could be winning, then you have this uh, more pleasure. But if you lose, 
just to come back. And now I'm, I'm worried about Anna's position. I don't see an active plan for her. I don't see an active plan for her to play after that. And I think she was looking so much to get this pass pawn, but this pass pawn will be blocked. She has open squared for her opponent. She has open squared for her opponent. So this is absolutely, uh, wasn't the best way of playing. It was very dangerous way of playing. It was actually also helping white here. But let's see, there is still lots of fight. But what is Anna going to do? I have no idea. I don't know how I would go maybe knight f6. We have knight e2, maybe to bring the rook here. We have knight e3. And where is this rook going to be? I don't know. Can we go something like rook f7? Or is it like, is f5 coming? Or is it like, could c5 even be coming? I don't know. Yes, now c5 is coming. We need to stop c5. So this, because after this, we would have c5 coming and then this would be crucial. So all of a sudden, I don't know how to, I don't know how to play this for black. She is actually, uh, I don't know, because white has a very clear plan. Bring the knight to e3 and then after to decide what to do. Then all the pieces will be very well placed. The rooks up with the queen, maybe to b3 to put pressure on d5, maybe to d2 and the rooks are connected. Then to bring away the king and it could be that she will start some, uh, her, that he will start some idea with going uh, g4. And Anna always have to watch up for c5 because even if you give a pawn, c5 would open up for this diagonal. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone g5 because I'm so scared of my own king. And also because uh, I, I, I just see that, uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't done it. But I'm also, I, there are lots of moves Anna has done. Some of them very good moves I wouldn't dare to do. So she's playing in a more active way than I would do. So now Anna is thinking, and I think she realized that it's not so easy for her any longer. She played these moves quickly and she wanted to play an active idea. She wanted to go for the full point with g5, but she should have played in a more, uh, she should have played on the queen side, play on the king side. Uh, yeah. And I don't know what to do here. We can go queen e7, threatening here, but you can even play knight g2 because after this here, taking here, I wonder, rook a1, oh sorry, rook a1 and we are coming back somewhere, we will take rook a7 and we will have activity. The rook is here and we will put the knight on e3 and white will absolutely be better in a position like this. We have changed the better bishop and we are staying. This is absolutely not so nice uh, to be playing. Maybe we can try to change the rook, but white is absolutely better here. So I am very much concerned about Anna's position. I'm absolutely very much concerned about her position because I don't know what to play. I would go, I would go knight f6, we will see knight g2. What would I try to do? If it, now we don't want to take so much on c4 because maybe queen is seven. And then of course, if you go knight d3, we will grab the pawn. We will get an extra pawn here uh, because we have this in between move and this would absolutely be fine to be playing we will get an extra pawn but in a position like this i guess queen b3 looks so natural you defend an a3 and can we try something else here now i don't know i don't dare to put the king on h8 i don't know where to have the king maybe do you need to go h6 and queen h7 but i don't know where to have the queen king actually this is just so scary. It could be that white is also planning f5 in a position like this. It could absolutely be that. It could absolutely be that. So g5 was played. g3 was very good. And one Anna took, like before, when her opponent took an e4, Anna took back with f pawn. Very good. Her opponent took back with e pawn. This was a very good move. And now her opponent has, I would say, a very nice, very sound position uh, because he has getting good pawn structure and he's getting this knight to be on e3, this beautiful square. And Anna has a pass pawn in the end game. This is very good, but this pass pawn is very close to the king and white will use this knight on e3. It will blocking the pass pawn, but at the same time, it will put pressure on d5 and it will also be going very close to f5 and be able to get to g4 also. 
No, Anna is not winning. She's having uh, her opponent is having the better position now because Anna played a very, very aggressive plan and it was a little bit too, it was too aggressive and um, not what the position wanted because you can see her king doesn't have any shield any longer. And, uh, and, and if this d4 pawn would be going, that could be some very, very nasty things, but it could also be nasty thing with other in another way. So her king is very weak. She doesn't have so good places for a position and she cannot play because now if she tried to play against the weaknesses, one of them is that white, this knight will defend all the weaknesses. What she could have played before against before she doesn't have the time because white will absolutely go here and ha defend everything with a knight on e3. So queen e7 could be a move knight. So I would just like to go queen e7. You can even play this, maybe to go knight f6. And now we're planning. And after a move like this, I actually don't know what to do. I would be so scared to put the king here on this diagonal. It's still possible, but I would be so scared. I don't know. Can we go f5 here? Do we dare to make a move like e5? No, we have some crazy, crazy tactics here because I want you just to see this, that this would absolutely be losing a piece here. So uh, this is just very far. But to, I would just say in a position to put the king here, I would never dare it with this bishop. With the pawn on g7, yes, but without the pawn on g7, no, I would be so scared to play this move. So let's see, Anna is thinking, she's down to 23 minutes, and I can understand she's thinking now because it is the position is more difficult now than it was before. So Anna play this beautiful Reykjavik open with four, uh, uh, with four, um, 400 players, I wanted to say, all playing the same playing hall. We are seeing some of them behind. We're seeing some of them, some of the grandmasters also sitting there behind Anna. We can see the number one to the left now. We can't see him any longer. The number one in the tournament is Bogdan Diak from Romania. He's one of six players with six and a half out of eight. Anna, she has four and a half out of eight, exactly like her opponent. Anna is playing Yunchen here from China. And uh, he has played, um, I would say he has played some strange move. He went back with his knight to e1, but he had a clear plan. And we could see him afterwards playing according to his plan. Anna got a very nice position, but she played too aggressively. And I believe Anna will need to defend this game. And I just hope she will manage that. I just need, I think she will need to defend her game because it's not, I cannot see an active way for her to play. It would just make the position more difficult. So will she be ready now from going from activity to start to play a little more small moves just to keep the position um, alive, keep the position going and let her opponent decide what to do here. And now she is thinking so much. She is actually thinking a lot. And uh, yeah, Anna, she has this four and a half out of eight. This means plus one. And of course, she would love to finish the game with winning, but we have to see. After a move like this, queen is seven, queen b3. Sometimes c5 could be coming. It's not the danger yet here. c5 because, of course, it could be coming. But I like knight f6 here. I don't know. Do we have some other tactics here? No, I don't think. Could we go queen d7? We could absolutely play it. But the queen is not so good. Again, we have this. And knight is coming. So we are blocking the threats to take on f4 and after the king will move and the knight will come to e3. So, yeah. So let's see what will she play here now. She's thinking she's down to 21 minutes and we can see that the last three moves taking on e4, g5, she took on f4. This last three moves she has been spending like 40 minutes and that is quite a lot. She has made some good decisions but she has also not made the best decisions after that. And she, oh no, this is position, it's like this, this is position, like this. And uh, she has spent 40 minutes and uh, let's see what she's going to do. Uh, she can go queen e7, absolutely. Queen here, you can come here. And the plan is, of course, if you go c4, we will just grab the pawn here and we will have an extra pawn because we can see it's not possible to make back. The king is a pin here, it's a pin. But in a position like this, when Anna go queen g7, she threatened to take knight g2. It's just a very good way of, uh, let's say, uh, closing the diagonal. And the knight is just, it's on the way to e3. It's not there yet, but it's on the way to go.
to e3. So let's see what will she play here. She needs to make a move and she's thinking, she's actually thinking very, very much in this position. And uh, yeah, I'm, um, yeah. And this is, uh, this is the last round and it started at 11 o'clock uh, Icelandic time uh, earlier and it's 12 o'clock CT time. There we could see Dina Bielenkaya, one of the streamers who are also playing in the tournament. There are several streamers, also the Alexandra and Andrea Botes. And of course, Anna. And here we see Anna's opponent from yesterday. She played against a Turkish player, was it Yigit Yashgi? Hussein Yigit Yashgi. Maybe I think his name was like that. But so knight f6 came now. I think this is a good move to play. This is absolutely fine to play. Knight f6. She's bringing up the piece into activity. Her opponent can go different things. He can, but I'm sure he will go knight g2. I think he will play it very quickly. Anna is down to 20 minis. She has made now, was it 18 moves? Has, she has made 18 moves and she still had 22 moves to make in 20 minis plus half a minute for every, every game, every move. Plus she will get half a minute for every move she makes, exactly like her opponent. So they always get this half a minute and this is something I'm so happy that we are playing with now when we're playing. Also you're playing you're playing classical also with rapid. This is absolutely. And he played knight g2 because he's so happy. He got his knight into the game. He got his knight into the game. And now what is Anna going to do? I like um, I like Yaster to go queen e7. And uh, let's see if she will play this. I think this is just a very, very natural way of playing king e7. What is she going to do here now? Now in this position, it's not longer. I don't like so much to take on c4. I think e4 will become very weak when you have uh, uh, no pawns on e3 for, for white. No pawns on e3 for white, but you can absolutely take it. I like queen e7. It looks like Anna is on her way to move here because but she took on c4. She wanted to take on c4. But I don't know. I'm very scared that after bishop takes c4, what is she going to do here now? After bishop takes c4, what is she going to do? Maybe she will have to play a position like this and go bishop a6 to play this position. And we will have this. How will this be? Well, here, maybe this will be fine to play queen d7 we're threatening rook c8 maybe should we go rook to c1 maybe this is absolutely uh getting fine i don't know can we go knight to d5 i'm not sure because this is such a weak pawn no we cannot do we cannot go with the rook to c8 either so she took on c4 she played very actively she took on c4 let's see how her opponent will take back will he take with the rook he could absolutely do that but if he takes with the rook this is not such a good move but this could be difficult to see so maybe d takes c4 could be the best move to play can he do something else can he go knight e3 i don't think so because no of course not we will just defend our extra pawn so after anna took on c4 i'm just a little bit scared if he goes here that anna goes knight d5 because we have queen g4 check and there's a check and e6 pawn will be going this would absolutely lose the game. So she, yeah, that will be pawnless and that would absolutely not be good for her to play. So if bishop takes, probably the best is to take on c4, take like this, just pin it, you will get exchange back, you will defend it probably like this, not going b5, but we just take this and now queen d7, we defend an e6 pawn, we are planning after a moment like knight d3, we get rook to a more active place and how is a position like this? And here, white is absolutely better in this position. Can we go something like that? No, I don't think so. There could be f5. There could be could it be knight g4 here. Could also be a little bit scary. This is absolutely scary to play, but we get some tactics here. Now we have queen take e4. We have some threats here. And what is going to happen? I have no idea, but you have some activities here. Yeah, absolutely. So this is just getting crazy. Let's see. But Anna plays the most active way. She took on c4. How will her opponent take back? That is absolutely important. Bishop takes c4. Looks like the most natural way to bake him back. Rook takes c4. What could he do? Could it be queen d7? Could this be a fine move? 
but I'm wondering night E3, how is this going? Then maybe we have knight D5. One reason why also to take the bishop is more logical because we will bring up the queen here. It cannot go up yet because the knight defends the king. Remember, the knight defends the king, but we are putting, and he did that, he played bishop, take c4. This was absolutely very logical. And now the best is for Anna is to go to take on c4, is just to change some pieces. Will she find this? This is absolutely the best. He took on c4 with the bishop, and this is very logical. He's putting some fresher, pressure here on e6. He can also, if this knight move away, he we can bring up his queen. So I don't want Anna to grab the knight. If Shana, this knight needs to defend the king, because if she goes away, we have this tremendous move. A check here, and this pawn will be falling. If she comes here, we, this is last. So scary, we have f5, and we are opening up for the for this would just be losing in the middle. We see the rook is coming here. The king is up. No, this would absolutely be a big mistake. So the, actually the best what Anna can do is to start exchanging some pieces. And we can see that if this pawn would on f5, Anna would have, I would say this would be absolutely fine to play. But this pawn is now, we see she has gotten an isolated double Pawn. So she needs to play with activity. She needs to play with activity to compensate it. Will she take on c4? This is absolutely the best she can do, I would say. Could you go some queen e7 here? We're putting some frets, but maybe you just go knight e3 because we don't have time to take on a3. I have no idea. Can we go b5? This is getting some tactics. You're getting back here like this and we're tr trying to take this line and we will have a position like this i have no maybe we we are getting fine like that this is just so far away but maybe i don't know queen the one could be better because we have this yeah this is so scary i don't know if we can play a position like this taking here now we will just after taking here and here we have this i just want to show this very very important check and wherever the king is moving we have a rook hanging here so this is one reason why it's very scary not to have the g-pawn the queen can always enter queen can always enter and it's just so scary that the queen can enter because this pawn on g7 was protecting the king if this knight goes away this king queen will enter the best Anna can do now is to take on c4 take away the pieces and uh but it's uh, just to change in some of the active pieces. So when their opponent has less active pieces, the opponent has less ac uh, pieces to attack with. Yes. <laughs> so this is a way of just yes, taking away. And we can see that this bishop is, is, is quite passive on b7. And she wants to play on the white squares, actually. She wants to try to play on the white uh, squares to keep this bishop um, uh, blocked on b2 it could be she will lose the e4 pawn but try to get some activities so she wants to change this bishop against that one will she play rook take c4 Anna is down to 16 minutes she's down to 16 minutes so the move i would love her to play now queen e7 was not played and queen e7 wouldn't be such a good move um so could she go she could also go bishop d5 here but i guess then this knight is just coming and I don't know, again, we cannot play this. This would absolutely be losing a pawn because we remember there are some tricks here with queen g4. This is absolutely very, very scary. So um, I just do hope she doesn't go bishop d5 because after bishop d5, knight e3, she will need to take on c4 probably. And we have this rook take c4, we go queen d7, and how is this going to be? And we can see here now that her opponent will be able to absolutely to open up the position. This will be so, so dangerous. Her poor king will just, yes, there will not be any way uh, because her opponent wants to take on e6 and then go on d5. Then her opponent will be attacked with one, two, three, and four pieces. And this poor king doesn't have any shelter any longer. So I would say, I just hope she take rook take c4. I just hope she play rook take c4. Um, knight take d5 would be a blunder. Um, so, and she needs to take on c4 before knight e3 coming. White will play knight e3. If white managed to get the knight to e3, 
uh, I like an absolute play like this here and bishop a6 and if you go knight d3 I'm wondering maybe we can go we don't have to take it maybe we can make a slow-mo I don't know can we go queen d7 here it could absolutely be a possibility and to play like this I guess we will bring in maybe we'll I don't know should we go bishop c7 probably because if this move is coming I'm just no we don't dare to take it we just need to block everything yeah also this is quite quite scary this is absolutely scary also so let's see let's see but she needs to take on c4 I think um, that if she doesn't sorry this is the position if she doesn't do that she will absolutely get more into uh, into more problems. So bishop takes c4 was played. That was absolutely the most logical move. Here opponent is bringing up the bishop, threatening to win the game on the spot, taking on e6. She needs to defend it. She will not be able to go knight d5 because this need needs to defend against the queen. Also we take him with the bishop we see. I told you the queen can come up to g4 and h5. There are always some uh, yeah queen is seven but of the queen seven we just go knight e3 we don't have a threat of taking here because after position like this we also we always have bishop take e6 and we will have some threats here so this would not be a good it could also be that after this we this is a pin we have knight f5 and yeah the knight is coming in here this would absolutely be very very scary to play here and we will just take this and we will take the rook here I guess or we could even play something else but we will have an exchange less and this would be a not easy to play with it would be losing I would say so let's see Anna is thinking here she took on c4 will she take a, um, one more time on c4 this is absolutely the best she can do here we see Galperin the opponent Anna played against um, the first round a uh, the opponent Anna played against the first round. He was walking behind her. He's still playing a game. There are lots of fighting going on here. We can see some good plays, some strong plays. We see lots of plays sitting there behind. And Anna, she is having four and a half out of eight. She's having four and a half out of eight. She has won four games. She has made a draw. That was an amazing draw. It was played during five and a half hours and it was only the king's left when it was the draw and then she has lost three games she's up to plus one but what will happen depends on this game and she is actually she's under pressure she had a good position she made some good decision but then she started to play very aggressively and now she's under pressure and the best way to try to keep this pressure lower is to take i would say on c4 uh yes to take away a piece uh less pieces but she would still absolutely here queen a4 i think would be coming here and here if we go queen c8 i guess can her opponent play this maybe this is actually what anna is hoping for to play she's hoping to for to play the king to play the end game and here she's not any longer worse so anna is actually hoping for to play the end game this is absolutely and what she wants to do so this could absolutely be an idea but she has to find this rook take c4 i would say it's not easy and what could we think of yeah we could think of we have a our opponent is are attacking and one of the way when we are under pressure our opponent are is attacking us as then uh, we try to see can we make a counter strike can we make a threat and here she doesn't she's she cannot do that she cannot threaten anything and another way to uh, play against the the pressure the play against when you are under attack is to see can we take away one of the active and um, the active pieces and this is actually what she can she can change this active piece for this passive one there will also be a rook pair rook coming off and we could see if she does that Anna wants to go to the end game and the end game would be very very fine for her the end game would be very good but with the king, king queens on the board this position is very dangerous so Black, white would always play to keep the queens on the board in this position. Absolutely. So, oh, Anna is down to 10 minutes. They have played, uh, her opponent has played 20 moves. 
Anna is on her way to play 20 moves. She has only 10 minutes left, her opponent, uh, and she will get half a minute per move. So she has 20 minutes left for 20 moves. So she has one minute per move. So she is not allowed to think so much. But again, we have this critical moment. Again, no, 95 would be a big mistake because without the pawn move, the queen would be coming here. She would lose the pawn immediately. This would just be no chance. I would say she wouldn't have a chance to save the game. So the knight cannot be active. And this is a little bit the problem she has with the position. She cannot make so many active things because this knight needs to defend the king. We don't have a pawn on g7. If we could move this pawn to g7, this would be a better position to have the, a, the pawn on a7 on g7 or the pawn on b6 here, but would also be better. But she doesn't have this, uh, this, the, this pawns defending her king. So her king is very open and this is why Anna is dreaming of getting, uh, exchanging the queens in this position. And here we can see Dina is standing a little bit to the right. He's looking at the, she's looking at the board. And Anna play rook take c4. She play rook take c4. I would say this is absolutely the best she can do. Her opponent has only one more move to do, and he does it directly. And this is actually allowed. You make a move, you can answer without writing down on the score sheet. You are allowed to play just one move like that. But then you have to write it down on the score sheet. And when we're playing classical game, we have a score sheet. We have a paper on the side where we are writing the most. So Anna played this, her opponent took back directly, and now I don't know why Anna is thinking of bishop a6. This is absolutely what she has to do. I don't hope uh, if she goes something else that I, I, I do not know because this knight is coming to e3. She needs to go bishop a6 just to take back material. I don't want her to go e3. There will not be enough counterplay here. Her opponent will blow up the position with d5 in some moments and her king will be weaker. So bishop a6 she has to play absolutely. But I'm a little bit worried because Anna start thinking here. I think she shouldn't be thinking. She should go yes bishop a6 take back it and play for the white square. Try to play this in a positional way. This is absolutely what I want her to do. Bishop a6. Can we see if Anna will do that? I'm a little bit scared that she wants to go for some activity, but this would absolutely, if she goes for e3, I would say that this is just uh, maybe losing the game here. This would absolutely be uh, losing the game here now. So she needs to take back, and how can she take back the material? She go bishop a6, and we see it's a pin here. It's a pin here also on f1, and I'm a little bit worried. She should have played bishop a6 quicker, but she is taking some time and uh, thinking, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> my my English is, is, is a bit funny, I know that. It's a bit funny, but it's, it's just like that. So. Uh, yeah, bishop a6. And why we want to take away the white square? Because we have pawns on white square. Anna is thinking, and this is not what I want her to do. She needs to go bishop a6. If she doesn't play bishop a6, I would say she is not in the game so much any longer. She needs to take back the material. And rook is so much more to keep it up. The, it's just so safe here. If she goes e3, you can just go back here and you will absolutely have a fantastic position. So now she's thinking into fourth she down to seven minutes and yeah this is absolutely worrying me this is absolutely worrying me because bishop a well the idea with e3 would be to try to get the queen to d5 but even if you have queen to d5 you would just you will just go back you will just grab this pawn and we can see i get some crazy move you take this we go queen d5 and we will just go queen e2 and everything is defended this would just be uh, rook more for nothing. So she needs to go bishop a6. And what is a little bit scaring me is that she's taking the time here when bishop a6 is absolutely necessary to play to be in the game. She ne really needs to play bishop a6. Her, uh, she's need, really needed to play that to get back material. And then she will be in the game. She's still having the worst position, but she has managed to ch change one of these active pieces. And uh, so let's see what will she do now. But she's down to six minutes. And when you have a little time, uh, it could be that you value the, the position in the wrong way. I'm just so scared she do something else than bishop a6, because then I, mm, I cannot see how she could save the game in any way. She's down to six minutes, and she has been spending like three, four minutes for this last move, which has to be played. She has to take back material. Really, she has to do that.
No, this is true. After each move, you really need, need to look at the position with new eyes. But Anna, having so little time, she doesn't have time for that. So Bishop A6 really have to uh, be played here. No, Anna is under pressure. She's under pressure because she has a pawn, pawns, double isolated pawn like this. And we can see that these three pawns against one. And also because she has such a weak king. And I'm so, so worried about the fact that Anna is thinking here. She's getting into little time. And with little time, it's very easy not to understand the right violation of the position. And here she needs to take back the exchange that she has sacrificed. She really needs to take it back. Will she go? I'm so worried she will not go bishop a6. I'm really so worried about that. If she goes bishop a6, she will absolutely be fighting in the game. We would, could see something like this. Queen a4, we would take it here. And maybe queen c8 is fine to play, but her opponent will absolutely bring the queen in here. Can we go some queen d7 here? We have a knight to e3, and I'm just wondering how will this be? Can we go somewhere here? No, we cannot bring. The queen needs to be close to the king's side. We cannot go knight d5 because there is a check here. I don't know what we are going to do. Maybe move like rook f7. She played, she didn't go bishop a6, she played e3, and this is actually, now I, I cannot see how Anna will defend the game. She played bishop a6, she played e3, uh, she didn't go here, she played e3, but now if her opponent is moving the rook, she will absolutely, uh, just moving the rook will absolutely be very, very fine for her, for her opponent. I don't see how she is going to... Um, uh, because a rook is so much. So she still had bishop a6, but this pawn, her opponent could go knight a3, play with a pawn more, could absolutely do that. This is also absolutely fine. So e3 was not the best move. And I, I think uh, after e3 now, I, I don't think Anna will be, I'm just very, very scared. I don't see how she can save this game because her opponent can just take the pawn, her opponent can move the rook, and this diagonal is not at all. Uh, strong for her and um, so uh, I'm sorry oh I'm getting mm, I'm not so happy about this move but it's like that she's down to a little time she wants to attack but it's not enough rook is so so strong and they're so easy to defend this g2 square her opponent can go something like rook e1 just grab the rook back like this but then my anna might get something like knight defined keeping this pawn but no we have queen e4 again no if her opponent moves one of the rook i cannot see anything that anna can do here now if he moves one of the rook i cannot see anything uh, good for Anna. I'm so sorry. She played this beautiful taking on c4, but after she went e3 and that was not the best, she should have taken back the material. And this is, it's like Anna wants to play for an attack, but she has only this bishop to play with. She needs to get the queen to d5, and this queen is far from d5, and even if she gets the queen to d5, it's so easy to do, defend uh, the knight on e2. It's just so easy to defend the knight on e2. The knight on g2 to keep this diagonal block. So this is what she wanted to do. She wanted to open up the diagonal, and this is why she played like this. Her opponent took here, and it means we get a position like this. Now, Anna, what is she going to do? I have no idea what her idea was to, be, was to play here now. Now she can go bishop a6, but she will play the same position with a pawn less. What did she do now? She played, I don't know, I cannot see what she did. What did she play here now? I, I cannot see what she played. She played queen, did she go queen to e8? Rook to e8. No, I don't know. She played queen to e8. This is what she played. But uh, so her idea is to get queen e6, queen e4. This is her idea to play this with a white square. But I don't know. I cannot see anything. Let's see. You go rook here. We can go, yes, b queen e6 here. And you can even blow up the position with f5. And what are you going to do if you take here now? We will just bring it in with a knight. And we have a knight on f5. This is just, we need to come back. No, we cannot go back. There's a fork here. This would just be so, so bad. No, queen in eight was played. And now her opponent is just having exchange more and a pawn more. Anna doesn't have enough for the attack. 
I, I cannot see how Anna is going to say this game. Uh, absolutely not. I cannot see that. Uh, her opponent can play lots of different things. The only, he can even, yeah, maybe could, he could even go maybe D5, no, but D5 would actually be what Anna would be hoping for because she would actually blow up the position like this and after the moon knight F5, she would actually, yeah, she would just yes, grab the rook. She, she will get in, but of course he will not play D5 now here. But Anna is trying to play for an attack. The problem is that she is the one with little time. Her opponent has lots of time. Her opponent has lots of time. And he has also, I would say, a winning position. He has a pawn more, but he has also an exchange more. Anna played everything for to get this bishop up here, but it's not enough. This is absolutely not enough uh, because the rook is so strong. Her opponent can go rook here and what, what is Anna going to do? I have no idea. Yeah, we, we will maybe go bishop e4. And we are putting the rook on a good square here now. And now f5 is absolutely coming next move. f5 is absolutely coming next move. You could try to get something like this. and But this, just to block it. And the idea is if you go like this, we I don't know if we can play like this. No, this would not be good because we can see you have these pawns marching here. No, I, I have no way to see how Anna could be defending this position. She played queen e8, she played queen e8, and yeah, she could go with the bishop move, but she would be playing with the pawn more. It would be more important to keep the pawn on e4, because keeping the pawn on e4, one is that you have a more pawn here, one is that e6 would be easier to defend. So uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm just worried very worried about Anna's position here. This is the position at the board. Anna is um, material about, she is having exchange in a pawn less. I cannot see. Uh, and this is just a winning position for our opponent. Mm, I'm not so happy about this, but it's Anna played very aggressively. She had a beautiful position, but she played too aggressively and she was actually helping her opponent. She got into problems. And when she got into problems, she wanted to play for activity, but she gave up an exchange. She should have taken it back. She would still have been worse, but it would have been much easier to fight there. We didn't exchange in a pawn less. This is not enough. I just cannot see anything. And she is not also, queen b5 is not really a big threat because maybe this is what she's planning also. Go queen b5, but you can't get a queen to d5. This beautiful knight, which was a better place than e1, has got to a very good square on e3. So what will her opponent play? Yeah, g5 was a crazy move Anna played. She wanted to go for the attack, but it was, yeah, that was too aggressive. I, I never played, uh, of course, I never played against Fisher. I never saw Fisher in my life. And he, Fisher played this incredible match against Boris Pasky in Reykjavik, 72. It could be, as I, I don't know if I saw a little bit on this on television, I'm not sure, but I was, I didn't play chess that, I was not at all interested in chess at 72, I started the year after, so I never saw him because um, uh, he stopped playing after that. 1972 was the last tournament he played uh, in what, in I think in Fidesz tournament. Later on he played a second match against uh, Boris Pasky in Sveti Stefan, but uh, then he played yeah, some friendly games. I don't think he played any kind of matches or anything more than he played 72, then he stopped for a long time. And it was in 95, it was in the 90s, he played the second match uh, against Boris Pasky and he won that match too. So I don't know, her opponent is thinking, but he has so much time and uh, he has so much time. And Fischer has been very important for chess becoming so popular on Iceland. But not only Bobby Fischer, also Friedrich Olafsson, who was the first grandmaster on Iceland. He, I don't know if he still played chess. I actually played against him like 13 years ago in a very beautiful tournament. I think it was a memorial to Eve tournament in in, um, in Amsterdam. So he played there and he also was the FIDE president during the years 78 to 82. But he and the match taking place on Iceland 72. And when I was on Iceland first time, 84, 
I, here we see Yatas on one of these legendary play. He's coming with the jacket, and so he has finished his game. I have no idea what happened with him, but he was one of these famous, very strong Icelandic players in the end of 80s, in the 90s, in, and uh, all they had so many grandmasters, and they had more grandmasters per uh, capita, I guess, than any other countries. So what he will play, we can see how her opponent is still fully focused. Uh, could it be, we can see that he takes his time and this is what is very good to move. When you have a good position, you should take your time. You, should, you shouldn't start speeding the moves, you should just take your time. Absolutely, this is what you should do. There are many grandmasters competing. I think someone said it's about 30 grandmasters. I haven't calculated them yet. I can see there are about 50 nations are playing there, but I haven't calculated, I haven't seen how many grandmasters there are. But it's a very strong tournament, a very beautiful tournament with many grandmasters, many strong players, but also lots of amateurs and 400 players playing all together in the same playing hall and in the same in the same tournament. Yeah, there are 13 uh, players from Sweden and Julia Östensson is one of these players. Julia Östensson is one of the young upcoming girls we have. She actually played in the, she played in the European team last time for the national Swedish woman team. So um, there are some Swedish players, there are lots of players from different countries and Anna has played against eight, uh, against players from so many different countries, only twice against Swedish players, and then it had been players from different countries. So it's just so, so beautiful. I, I don't know how Anna can save this game any longer because it's an exchange down, it's a pawn down. It would, for her to save it, she would need to have two, pawn moves, two, two more pawns. Uh, to have a pawn in exchange, then this would absolutely be fine. But instead, she is a pawn down, not a pawn up, and I don't see any way of her for her to save this game. So, and I am Pia Crumbling. I'm Anna's mother. So I have been commentating uh, during these three, in these nine games during seven days, and Anna will soon, in one week and a half, play on Menorca. Uh, it's in Spain, it's, it's the, the smaller island close to Mallorca and they're going to have a big open and she will play there. Also nine games, but it will be nine games and six in uh, six days. So it will be actually be three double rounds. It will be a very, very tough schedule and a very, very strong tournament. And I will also be commenting her, uh, on, on uh, Anna's game when she played there. So. Let's see what her opponent is doing, but he does it absolutely right. He does it absolutely right uh, to keep, uh, to take time. And yes, this is what he absolutely is doing. It could be that Anna didn't see any way to save the game and she thought she had to go for this. But I would also believe that when she had a little time, you start thinking in another way. You start uh, seeing, uh, hoping to, that there are some activities. You don't value the position the best way. And um, Anna went for, try to have an attack on the king. She is, if Anna could move and she could queen it too, this would absolutely uh, be good for her. If she could make this move, it were her move to move, but you're not allowed to jump over the pawn, but this would absolutely be a good move. Then she would absolutely be doing fine, but it's not her, she to move, it's her opponent to move, and she is not, it's not possible her, for her to bring the king, the queen to e4. But this is maybe what she's planning, but after queen e6, the f5 will be coming, and I don't know what can you do after a move like f5, yeah, you can go queen d5, that could be absolutely a possibility, but yeah. I don't know, really. So Anna is planning, maybe after queen c2, can we have this move? After f5, can we go queen g5 here? But then bishop c1 is coming. Her queen doesn't have any good squares. And this is not the problem. We can just take it back, check, and we put the knight here and everything is defended. And after knight g4, we are threatening some nasty things here, but we have bishop f4 
everything works for white because white is having a whole look more white is having so many pieces and so this it really doesn't work for Anna this position if the rook goes to c2 if the rook goes to c1 then queen g6 f5 could this be some better chances for her it could perhaps be that but we have queen e2 and i don't know what could we try to play here now this is still we don't have threat to take on g3 because again i just want you to see that check we will always go knight g2 and after a move like this uh, we have queen here coming here and we can go rook c8 and we see that there is no Anna's king is coming under the attack because after that we would actually bring out this bishop so uh no there is i cannot see how she can get some danger but also rook c1 is not a logical move i would say rook c2 is a logical move but you can also play something else f5 wouldn't be so logical now because after f5 knight take f5 can we go queen e4 and finally gets in with the queen here so f5 is actually what anna would be hoping for absolutely but still after f5 we have queen b3 what is she going to do she needs to go some queen e6 there is and maybe now we can go knight f5 i have no idea bishop d5 but of course her opponent will not play f5 here because it would open up the position for anna so he will play some i don't know what move can he play here now uh, what move can he be doing i don't know rook c2 would, looks very logical f5 is not a good move can it be that he goes knight g4 he wants to hate but after knight g4 anna will have a counter we will have she will have a counter like this will this be enough she threatened to take the rook she's threatened to take here and if you try to defend it with the queen like this anna will have queen d5 and it brings it out here so this knight is very good on e3 this moment if you come back here we don't have time to come back because we would grab here and we would be better so knight g4 there are some still hope that her opponent will go wrong this knight is beautiful here because it controls all this square and uh, also it defends the rook on c4 it also look at g2 so the if anna gets the queen here she threatened queen h1 but she doesn't threaten queen g2 so let's see her opponent is spending some time but he's down to 30 minutes but he still have lots on time he's down to 30 minutes but he does his absolutely the right way i would guess that he will make a solid move he can also go rookie one if he wants to yes to put pressure here but i guess then anna will go something like queen g6 and i'm just wondering uh oh d5 could d5 be a good move and after this we see queen d4 could be coming and no now we have knight take f4 all oh, this is getting crazy but maybe we have a move like f5 here and i have no idea what is going to happen here yeah we are getting in uh, like this and this i don't know what we will happen like that we have a check here but you always have we can just take it and we have rook d7 oh this is just very far away this is just very far away but there are always tactics working and with white having let's see for me the most logical move here is rook c2 bring the rook back and you will keep the seventh rank more uh, better defended it could be also that you want to bring this rook to f2 and you want to go f5 afterwards this could absolutely be a possibility because white uh, anna is down uh, anna is down so much material uh, she's down a pawn but also the exchange and she wanted to take the white square bishop because it was so scary with the white square bishop looking here and this one could also be looking here so she decided to do that hoping for getting some play against the opponent's king but her opponent has so much material her opponent will absolutely be um, um it's possible for her opponent playing while he has to defend against anna's threat and her opponent also has this idea of going f5 in the right position not now now it would not be the best but 
in some later moment. And her opponent can also in some moments, like he did, give back the change. Because if he gives back the change, he will have a pawn extra. He will absolutely have a pawn extra. And maybe this is the best I can hope for. But it's not only that he has a pawn extra. He will put pressure on e6. He will have very many act active pieces. Anna has this very weak pawn. This is maybe the passive pawn, uh, a passive piece her opponent has. But I would actually say that the best for Anna would be to get back with the exchange to play the position with a pawn down, but her opponent has a pawn. And also there, Anna would be have to struggling so much for saving the game. Anna's last move was queen e8. This is what she played. So she, Anna, in this position, I would have loved Anna to go bishop a6, take back the exchange. She still was, but she would, it would be the best way of fighting. She would be, but Anna went for the attack. She played this, sorry, rook c4 here. And now e3 came, her opponent took it. And now instead of going back here, playing with the pawn less, which would not have been so good, she went queen e8, hoping for some attack. Her opponent is spending some time. I hope her opponent will spend lots of time. So both of them are having a little time. Let's see how her opponent will play here now. But her, but Anna is down a pawn in exchange. And this is her triumph, this diagonal. But it's not easy for her to get her queen to e4. This is what she would dream of. If Anna could just be on the move and play queen e4, this would absolutely be uh, very good for her. She would absolutely be doing very, very well. But it's not the case here now. It's absolutely not the case. And so, uh, so, so, the, so it's very difficult to see how she can bring up how, sorry, how she can bring up her queen to have some threats against the opponent's king. Oh, I need to take some water. <laughs> Of course, we are very human. We are very human. And we normally like to attack. It's more difficult to defend. And of course, we are human. We are making mistakes. We don't, it's not so easy to validate uh, the position. So when you calculate, it's not enough to be able to calculate lots of moves. It's also important to know when do I need to stop calculating? When am I happy with the position which are coming up on the board? So. And these validating the positions are, of course, very, very difficult. So what could her opponent play? Could it be that her opponent goes queen b3? Yes, to put some pressure here. Can Anna then go knight d5? I don't know, something, what could be happen? Uh, rook f2 could absolutely be played here. I'm just wondering, and if it goes something like queen d6, I guess we again, do we have this f5 move? It could absolutely be so in here. I guess we have, maybe could we have bishop c1 here now? I'm not sure. So this was not the right way. And if we go queen h5, maybe could this be not? This would actually be final. Anna would be winning because she would have a check here. And all of a sudden, white king would be running up. But this would be if white plays not so carefully with the pieces. So white is taking the time. And this is absolutely right. White had enormous with time. I think white has spent in like 25, 20, 25 minutes. Could it be so much? Yeah, it's possible. At least at least 15, 20 minutes on this move. And uh, and this is right because white has huge material advantage. And I think white see that he's doing very well. But there are some ideas for Anna to get up with her king, uh, no, not with her king, <laughs> to get up with her queen and to attack her opponent. So he will have to, he will absolutely uh, have to defend against this. And if he can defend against the threats Anna is planning, he will uh, be, he will just keep his material ahead and then going into any kind of endgame. She can, Anna can play any kind of endgame. The only hope she has is that she can uh, get her queen into activity, the queen into this long diagonal so she can have a threat of going with the queen to h1. Her opponent is still thinking down to 24 minutes. I would say that's still plenty of time. They have played 22 moves. They have 18 more moves for getting to the can to the time control and 18 more moves for Anna has only five minutes. Her opponent has 23 minutes. So Anna is the one with very, very little time. Anna is the one with very, very little time here. And also she is 
and their pressure on the time but also on the board. She decided to play very aggressively. Maybe she wanted really to go for the hold point but instead her position is just very very dangerous. She has too little material and that means that when her opponent has more material, a pawn more, a rook more, it will be easy for her opponent to defend and also her opponent can always give back in exchange because her opponent uh, Yongshin here from China he is having uh, he will have he has also not only exchange more he has a pawn more so they are playing classical tournament this is the last game so this game will be finished in some hours maybe shorter than that and they both need to need reach 40 moves if Anna can reach 40 moves and still be having some threats I I would just love that. I really love that. But I am very scared in this position. I'm really very scared in this position. Anna has played very brave here. She has going for an attack very, very bravely. But it is just uh, not uh, not enough if her opponent will play the best. But this is, of course, chess is very practical. Let's see what her opponent will do. He's down to 22 minutes and I'm very happy that he is spending some time. There are players that when they are getting into difficult position, maybe they are quick players, but when they get into difficult position, they prefer to spend a lot of time. So we can see for Anna is not the case because she, like me, we are both slow players. We take our time when we play. But there are players who say that if you have a difficult position, the best is to play slowly. So you will um, you play slowly. Uh, so you will be uh, so your opponent will be tempted to play quickly. But here her opponent is just playing very, very. Uh, he take his time. He is still thinking: Will he make his move soon, or will he continue uh, some extra? time I have no no idea what he's going to do but let's see yeah he sank into force and I just hope he will spend lots of time I hope both of them will get into little time um, I think that will just increase Anna's chances that with little time her opponent might make a mistake and Anna will get her queen into uh, get her queen closer to the opponent's uh, king or she will somehow get uh, activity to compensate for, yeah, that she's having less material. She's a pawn down, but not only pawn down. She has this beautiful bishop, and this beautiful bishop is good, but she wouldn't, if she had a pawn on f5 and a pawn on g7, this would be absolutely very nice to play for black, but Anna is missing two pawns. If she had only one pawn, yeah, then it would of course be much better to have one pawn more. But normally when you have exchange down, sometimes um, you can actually have equal pawns, but normally you need to have one extra pawn for to have enough compensation positionally. If you have an attack or something else, yeah, that changed, uh, that changed everything. So let's see what her opponent is playing what her opponent will be playing but he's still thinking and I'm so happy uh, I'm just so happy that he takes his time yes Anna has been playing long games yesterday was like four and a half hour uh, the fifth round she played fifth uh, she played five hours so and this is also very typical for me <laughs> I remember that I lots of time I am the last one to finish because I normally play I play slowly. I normally get to play lots of end games, and the the games are just becoming very very long. So, but also Anna has been playing for so many hours in this tournament, and it's a classic air tournament with slow play. Her opponent is on his way to move. What is he going to play? What is he going to play? I think Rook C2 for me looks like the most logical move. I hope he will not play that. I hope he will go for some tactics, but I don't think so. I don't think he will go for some tactics because some tactics could absolutely uh, help Anna. But actually this, I would say, is a very good move. Just bring the Rook back. You can bring it to F4 and f2 and you can start moving the f pawn also here you will keep the second rank safe i would say that this is one of the more i like most you can also bring up the queen to b3 but i just hope uh, the, yeah the players have a clock you can see the red clock there 
on the side of the board so we don't see the time but they can see the time it's a digital clock and the clock is also connected with the board so uh, when uh, the clock is counting the moves I believe so when 40 moves are done the clock knows that and they will have this half hour uh, the digital board know that and they will have this half hour extra so they can see the time we don't see it from here because the clock is on the other side but we uh, we, we don't see the clock on the board on the board where they are sitting but we can see it instead on the on the live board here on the screen so what will he do here now but I just hope he will take some more time because when you are under time pressure it could be that you are not validating in the right way that you are actually doing um, that you are start making mistake so I'm just hoping her up on it he's on his way to move he has been standing spending quite a lot of time 25 minutes I believe quite a lot of time but he makes it the right way and let's see what he will do yes I'm hoping that how he will keep on playing slowly so they both will be in a little time and we will see who will have better control of the position in a little time but he still has 70 minutes and they are 18 moves to make 18 moves to make but only not 70 minutes he will also like Anna both of them will get half a minute per move when they are playing they are on uh, the they are on 22 moves they have made 22 moves oh there are lots of books to recommend I there are absolutely lots of books to, to recommend I would say I love the woodpecker method I love also and he played f5 he played f5 and this is actually not a good move he played f5 Anna can take the pawn on f5 now this was a mistake he can take the pawn on f5 but now and the idea is if you come here Anna will have queen to e4 and she will absolutely be fine in this position she will be fighting but after e take f5 he will probably go queen b3 and I'm just wondering can we go something like queen e4 no what will happen here we have d5 blowing up the position so he played Anna took quickly e take f5 and now so queen b3 is absolutely move and after queen b3 queen e6 is the best move to play and what did he play he played knight take e4 he knight take f5 he played knight take f5 oh this is getting crazy he played knight take f5 he, now Anna has now finally Anna can play queen e4 what is going to happen I think he wants to go d5 but after d5 what this is crazy after d5 what is happening here she can play queen take c4 she can play queen take c4 but what has happened after a move like this she has this here and there is no queen d4 coming because we will grab it we will grab it and what is a position like this we are getting some counterplay here what is this and in the end maybe we have bishop e6 this is just getting crazy so he didn't play the best he wanted to uh, Anna took an f5 and now queen e4 is such a good move queen e4 is such a good move what is he going to do after queen e4 he went for tactics Anna is going only having five four minutes five minutes plus half minute but now finally this queen can come to e4 and she should just put it on e4 because after the queen comes to e4 she's threatening mate in one she's threatening mate in white so it's getting crazy and if you stop try to block the diagonal she will just bring it and I think maybe a position like this what is going to happen we have a check here what are you going to do you need to go all oh, this is getting after you threaten to take it you need to go queen d4 we can take on d6 and we are having a bishop come end game and this is actually in the firework this is just uh, absolutely uh, uh, equal points oh I'm getting so knight take f5 was not the best it was a mistake so now her opponent want to open up play against Anna's king but Anna can get her queen in 
Anna can get her queen in. What she has been playing for. She has only one move to be in the game. Queen e4. Oh, I will take some water. <laughs> I will take some water. But queen e4 is just such a beautiful move. Anna is thinking and she's wondering what is going to happen. And important is that after queen e4, uh, she's threatening a mate here. What the best her opponent can do is actually to play the end game like this and to go knight take d6. But here Anna is only having one pawn less. We will try to exchange this knight and we will play this position. And absolutely, rook c7, we will go rook f7. And we will have dif different color bishop here. We will have different color bishop. And how is this being? I guess there are good chances for a draw, but white is having one and two pawn extra. Let's see, Anna hasn't played. Oh, she hasn't played. Let's... Uh, let's see we have to go back oh i'm getting so exciting oh i'm getting really so exciting let's see knight to get five queen e4 has to be played and this is absolutely a must move i'm a little bit surprised anna is taking is taking the time but it's a must move and this is what she has been playing for getting the knight getting the queen in to e4 what is going to happen here can it be after knight h6 here for her she needs to go with the king to g7 and the best her opponent is can do is to go back with here and we maybe we go king g6 can you go knight h4 and we just go back and forth here can you just try something like that no and go d5 we will actually have some i don't know this will actually be very good for i don't know king g4 i'm just wondering what will happen in here and we will take her with the check yeah this is just so crazy so crazy but i don't like that anna spends so much time because she has been playing for queen e4 she has been playing for a long time she wants to see what is happening here but she might need to have time later on so yes please anna play queen e4 i just want her to play queen e4 because this is what you have been playing for you need to go with the queen to e4 you don't have time for a slow-mo you need to go with the queen to e4 and you are threatening a uh, mate on g2 and this is absolutely the most active move i expected anna to go queen e4 i'm a little bit surprised that she takes her time but this is absolutely she needs to have an attack and she is down to 137 one minute and a half and she still has to make 17 moves she still has to make maybe is it 16 moves but lots of moves here. so queen e4 anna please play queen e4 i would be surprised if you don't play that because this is your chance to be in the game so yes please go queen e4 queen e4 no she took on g3 anna took on g3 Oh, I'm so sorry. She took on G3. This is just... Oh, she took on G3. I'm just so sad she played this move. She took on G3. Now, uh, now, after... Oh, oh, I'm so sorry Anna played this move. Now she will be losing. I'm sorry, I didn't see this move. I don't, the idea is after this Anna want to go queen E3 check. So she took on G3. But I don't know. I just think that her opponent can play lots of more. Maybe you can even go d5. Could you do that? Yeah, I'm very sad she took on g3. She should have gone up with her queen. Oh, yeah, I'm very sorry she played this. She needed to go up and play queen e4. And this was just, I was so sure Anna would play this. But she took on g3. And now I cannot see after this move, you go queen e4, you can go d5 here and queen take e4. And now uh, I don't see uh, there is, uh, uh, her opponent can go knight here for check, king g7, and you can even go rook f5. Can you go knight g4 here also? Uh, absolutely. She will have to play with a piece down. She will absolutely have to play with a piece down. And this, so this is absolutely losing the game now. I'm so sorry. Anna, with little time, she played as bishop take g6 because she needed time. She needed time. So this is the position. Here we have it on the board. This is the position. Have it on the board. 
And uh, her, uh, what Anna is hoping for is a night take. But even this, I'm just wondering, does she have any? No, I cannot see. She doesn't have any attack. After this, we have queen g4 coming here, maybe knight g5. And we can go rook c2. So again, uh, she, her opponent has so many pieces. No, I cannot see how she could be defending against this. Could it be that we can go h5 here? I don't know. Queen take h5. We have knight take f3 here. And we have king d2. We have the knight coming back. But we have maybe d5. I don't know what is happening here now. And we have the king to f1. This is still, yeah, this is still some hope here now. But it's still winning. So bishop take g3. Oh, I'm sorry. And I play this move. I'm yeah, sorry. But chess is like that. It's, it's, you know, it's very practical. Uh, d5 now is a good move. Uh, he can even take back with g3. Did he play? He played d5. Yeah, he played d5. And this is also a very, very good move now. I don't know what Anna is going to do. She go bishop e5 here now. And her plan is now to go. He can take on e5. He can absolutely do that. He can actually go. Can he not go rook g4 here also here? I'm wondering after a position like this here. No. And can Anna? Yes. Anna cannot go here. Ah, uh, yeah. She can go king h8, of course. So this was played. He go d5. Bishop e5 was played. Bishop e5 was played. And yeah, now... Um, I would just say that almost everything is winning for her opponent, but not really. Well, what could he do? He could just take here, take here, and go queen d4, and we can see uh, uh, how is this position. Anna is having exchange down. Uh, there are not so many. Um, there are not so many pieces on the board, but the problem is uh, she cannot take on d5 because after this we have like this. Maybe we have even a stronger move. Yeah, after taking on d5 we could maybe just go like this. I am not sure what is happening. And we have rook g4 and we will just play with the two exchanges down. This would be lost and also with the king on the rank. So mm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry uh, about this because it was so close that Anna would get uh, get into the game, that she would save this game, but she didn't do that. She played it wrong, and I cannot see if her opponent just yes, play well. And he has 14 minutes, he has 14 minutes, so he has lots of time. Anna's king is still open. Um, Anna has got, so she's actually having equal pawns here now, but her king is very open. We can hope that her opponent goes rook g4. This would absolutely be uh, very but this is a good move. Her opponent could also go something like this. And can Anna go rook here now? But no, it's the queen here because we have this fork. So this is absolutely something very, very strong for him to play. Can Anna? Anna has no way of trying to keep. If you come here, there will have maybe can we go something like queen c7? We go bishop d5, but we always have, oh, we even have a mate here now. We even have a mate like this and knight here, here. And made. So let's go back. Let's go back. Let's see what will happen. But this is has been a tremendous fight. Her opponent is thinking 95. I'm so surprised Anna didn't go queen e4. I think she forgot that after d4 she can just grab the rook. She was very scared of the opponent's tricks here and she forgot after the knight d6 she has queen c5 and she's giving a check. She's actually taking it up so back. So this was queen e4. She would have been in the game it would have been about equal chances for both but after Anna played this move and in attacking position this was too slow move um, her opponent could even take it back he went d5 and now Anna went bishop b5 her opponent is thinking here her opponent is absolutely thinking here but if he plays one of the good moves and he has lots of good moves we can see the plays here you can also see the opponent Anna had from the first round and uh, Galperin it looks like he has finished his game and let's see what he will do he took on e5 yeah this was a very good move Anna will absolutely take back and we will probably see queen d4 here we will absolutely probably see queen d4 in this position and he is just keeping everything under the control Anna took back here. No, she hasn't taken back, but now she did took back. And after queen d4, I cannot see how she is going to save the game. And here it came, queen d4. This is very, very good move. Um, this is absolutely very, very good move. And I have no idea how Anna is going to save this game. If she goes queen e2, we might see something like this. Can we go queen d4 here now? No, this would absolutely get some 
counterplay. But it could be in a position like this. We have rook c7 taking here and we have rook take f6 and this is going to be a mate. So this is position. Her opponent played this very good move and now I cannot see how Anna will save this position. She cannot take on d5 because after queen take d5 we have this fork and this would absolutely be finishing the game. So she cannot take, I think she will take, um, she played queen e2, she played the most active move here now and now knight e6 is a good move. After this position bishop take d5 we have you know, we have this mate here. Your opponent can also, can your opponent also play like this? Can we do this? And knight take d5. No, we have rook g8 here. So there's still possible to go wrong. Anna needs to keep, um, yeah, this is this a little bit rule. She played queen to e2. This was the last move played. Queen to e2. And she's planning a uh, bishop take d5. She is having less uh, material. So she needs to keep the material. And this is what we say when you have material bow, her opponent has an exchange bow, you want to keep, if you have material bow, you want to keep, you want to change pieces. And when you're down with material, you want to, uh, when you're down with material, you want to change pawns, but not the pieces. So if you somehow could get away with the pawns from the board and not be mated, uh, it would be possible to save this, but there's still pawns on the board. It's absolutely pawns on the board. And white will not try to queen this one. I would just show you that this would be mating one. So this d5 pawn is very important for white. It could be that white plays a safe move like queen f2, but it's not possible. It's not a safe move because the rook is hanging. It's absolutely not safe. You can play rook f2, but after rook f4, to, I guess we will just come back and we become have the same position again. So this is the position. Her opponent could absolutely do like that. To repeat moves is when you have, is nothing wrong. You're getting closer to the time control. So this is absolutely the best you can do. So Anna needed to keep the queens. She needed to keep the queens. Her opponent has uh, different ways of playing. Her opponent has different ways of playing. One could be just giving a check. I think that this Anna needs to go king g7 and could her opponent no not to take here knight g4 we would absolutely have mate in one here but in a position like this to go knight g4 and now bishop take d5 Anna is she getting some counterplay yes maybe here we can just run away and we are having some counterplay here this would be the good but after this move we have rook here and if you go king g6 here now we can just take rook take b2 and this would be the end of the game. So let's see. Knight h6 is one way of winning. It's also a way of checking because uh, after here, and I cannot go here, we have this move. And the problem is if you go queen one check, you can go back and you're giving a check. And it's actually also going to be a mate here. But you make this, you, you, you defend against the check, but we also have this attack on the king. So it doesn't work here. So let's see what knight h6, if he plays this, uh, this is a winning move. He can also go rook c7. This is absolutely a good winning move. What can he do more? These are the best moves, I would say. He can play something slowly, uh, but Anna is playing. Can he go queen c3? Can he just take here now? And then he has queen d3 and it's going to be a mate here. So this is queen c3 is absolutely also a good move. And the idea with queen c3 is maybe Anna needs to go king rook here and she's playing rook g8. And the idea is of course, if you come here, we will have the rook to g8 and black would be winning. So let's see, her oven is down to 10 minutes, but it's still a lot of time. It's still a lot of time. and. Uh, if it would be Anna to move, she would go bishop take d5. Maybe then she could save the game. But it's white to move here. It's white to move. And both kings are under attack. Unfortunately, white can catch Anna's king here now. And he played his knight h6 move. And now this would absolutely be the end of the game. This is absolutely the end of the game. After rook c7 is coming, Anna will need to go with the king to g7. And she played this. But now we will see the rook to c7, and after that, uh, uh, it will be picked up. Let's see if her open can still go wrong with knight g4. I hope so. Knight g4, but rook c7 is winning. Knight g4, 
uh, is a rook c7 and it's also a very easy move to play while he go knight g4 i hope he's looking more at the king side not at the queen side but now he start thinking he has a very easy move rook c7 and this would be the end of the game if he goes knight g4 i hope he can do that anna has bishop take d5 and she is actually in the game she is actually in the game here now be absolutely because this would absolutely so there is still a chance that he will go wrong i just hope he looks concentrating only to look at the king side not to see that his rook can come into activity and we see that white is attacking with the queen against f6 we have a knight very close to anna's king but this rook is also active and for to win he just needs to bring in one last piece and it's this rook he could also go rook c3 but the most logical is to go give a check let's see if he will go knight g4 i hope so if he go rook c7 this would be the end of the game this would be the end of the game anna has no chance to escape because after that if she tried to defend here he will only take this and anna will be whole rook up there is no threats anywhere he's thinking and unfortunately he has lots of time and now it looks like he's more looking at the middle of the board that a little bit scare me rook c7 is such a good move but it's also one of the first moves to look at so he could also could he give a check he could give a check but then anna would actually come here and she's planning to go somewhere here you could have this move but we can go bishop d5 do we get so no the queen is hanging so he could also go uh sorry this is the position what will he go and he play rook c7 and now there is no way for anna to defend anna play king g6 here there is no way for anna to defend and if he just take on b7 this would be the end of the game he can also go knight f5 this is absolutely both of it but because we can see he has a rook attacking queen this and this but this is absolutely no way for anna to save this game any longer so she was you know she was fighting she got the chance she had a good opening then she got the chance but she went it wrong and when you have this tactical position you need to play the best move he take on c7 and now there is no way anna can save it she's a whole rook down it's just no way she can save it uh because uh she doesn't she would like to go something like knight g4 but there it will be you will just take it with the check the idea with knight g4 is that you threaten H mate on f1 you threaten mate on h2 but you can just grab it so this is just nothing anna can do in this position she can absolutely not do anything and yeah i'm a little bit sorry because she had a chance but it's so easy to go wrong i've done it myself so many many times anna was under time pressure and again i would believe that if she had more time she would have find queen e4 but with little time she just went wrong and so anna is yeah there's nothing she can do she's a whole rook uh, down and there will be there's nothing she can attack with she has only queen to attack there will be either knight g4 knight f5 and her king will be mated in some few moves it could be anna wants to try anything but i think she has realized that there is nothing she can do and that she has to resign so but okay let's see she played the move she played the move queen h5 just to try something and what can she try but her opponent can just go uh h4 her opponent can go knight f5 also and after the check here we can just play king h1 there is just nothing you can do i think we will see knight f5 this is very logical and after that there is nothing anna can go because after knight f5 the threat is to go um, rook g7 and mate and anna is having a whole rook down she's just playing some few moves more and sometimes you do that because you are just um uh, here is just i would say it's impossible to blunder you can also go knight g4 could you do that we have because after knight to take g4 we have a mate here with queen g7 and if you take like this with check we will play with a whole two rooks against the knight there is no chance to save it so this game will absolutely be finished at any moment and there's no way anna can save it but she made just one more move she will there will not be many moves here 
to be made. This game will finish knight. I think we'll see knight g4. Yeah, this is what he played. And now he's going to grab more material. And there is just uh, Anna. She will need to resign in this position. So, yeah. Anna will finish with four and a half after nine. It's not still finished yet, but there is rook take f6 coming. There is just nothing really that she can do. So Anna will be not gaining rating. She will be losing rating. I don't know how much time she played queen d5, but after queen d5, we have rook take f6 here and we can play queen take f6 we can play with the rook up and i'm absolutely sure her opponent will do that i'm absolutely sure he will do that just to grab an f6 and play with the rook up she play one more rule and here he play rook take f6 and now this is absolutely time for anna to resign she has nothing to do she will be whole rook less and yeah this has been very, very exciting game anna got a good opening she went too aggressively she was under pressure she played for an attack and here we can see anna resigned she is going to have and now she say queen e4 queen e4 the move she should have played and this has happened before afterwards you know queen e4 what is he going to play he wanted to go rook f3 and anna but Anna will be absolutely fine in that position. If you go queen e4, she, she saw it. And we can see how they are analyzing it afterwards. He wanted to stop the diagonal queen e4 and he wants to take on d6. But Anna will be absolutely fine in this position. She will be pawnless. I guess they will have different color bishops and this would be not so much. Um, would not. I think the game would have finished in a draw. So. But it's always a little bit sad to finish with a loss. Uh, but it's like that. Anna has played some amazing games. There have been so much fighting games. And in the end, Anna made four and a half out of nine. She is going to come back. She said this is her training tournament. She will be here with you very, very soon. So I just want you to stay a bit longer. She's analyzing with her opponent. She's analyzing together with her opponent. And this is what you like to do after the game. It might be they're going away to analyze uh, later on, but first she will be here with you. She will speak about the game with you. And I would say today was one of the moments where Anna had a chance to, you know, strike back with the queen to e4 and she would have played it if she had better time. So I would say because of little time, she didn't take her chance. She played bishop take g3, but that was too slow mo. That was absolute too slow mo in such a tactical position. But Anna will be back in Menorca Open in about 10 games, uh, 10 games not, but in about 10 days. And I am just waiting a little bit for them to finish their analyzing and then Anna will be here with you. She will be here with you at any moment. And let's see, they are analyzing uh, this book. He's saying bishop a6, and this is of course what Anna should have played, but she went for these tactics, and in the end it worked. The tactics worked, but I couldn't believe that her opponent, and this is actually quite what can happen when you get a little time you want to make this big move so her opponent instead of playing safe with material bound he wanted to go for Anna's king and finally he managed but he opened up for his own king and Anna could just have brought in his queen but it didn't happen it has been so exciting to follow Anna's games here and I will be also back with you Anna will absolutely be back with you now very soon to comment on her game but also in Menorca in 10 days so they are still talking about the game and this is what I love with chess that you are learning from each other so Anna's score was four and a half after nine she made 50 percent she's going to lose some rating I don't know how much it could be like 25 points maybe 30 points I have no idea she's going to lose some rating but I think here we have Jun Arnason he didn't play in the tournament but he was one of these legendary Icelandic players and one of those I think I played with him 84 I think I played with him later on also but I played with him 84 in Reykjavik in a close tournament so 
let's see, they are still analyzing the game. So Anna's score in tournament was four and a half after nine. She lost the first game against Galperin, a grandmaster. Then she won the game against another Swedish player with white. She lost the third game against a very young player from India who has been doing so well. He had four and a half, five and a half after eight going into the last round. I have no idea what he did the last round, but he had a low rating with 1900 but scoring very well. And then Anna won against a Norwegian player. She in the fifth round she made a draw in a very very long game. It was five and a half hours. They finished with the two kings on the board. Then she lost in the sixth game where her opponent played a beautiful sacrifice. It was all correct but Anna got the chance but she didn't take that one and then she lost. In the seventh round Anna won but it was very scary. She had a good opening after it was getting wrong and she was in the last position, almost last position, last position, her opponent could choose two moves. He chose the wrong move and Anna could bring in another piece to attack and she won that game. And then yesterday Anna also won another game and uh, against a player. Uh, the day before she won against an English player and yeah that was the one I told you. And yesterday she won against a player from Turkey and this was also a very, very exciting game going back and forward. Anna had a good opening. She went wrong. Her opening got a good position. When Anna had some counterplay, he started to play passively. And then um, it was about equal. But in an end game, Anna had knight against two pawns. She finally won the game and she won that uh, game, yes. And today, unfortunately, Anna lost the game. But she had, she got four and a half out of nine. And this is, yes, the last game in the tournament but there will be more tournaments to come and here they are still analyzing the position still speaking about the game and this is just so uh, so important uh, this is just so important to do to analyze to learn from each other and if you have time you can go away and do it for a long time sometimes you like to do it just uh, yeah, so her opponent has less rating than Anna and 150 points and uh, so, but Anna has got her chances. We can see that her opponent gave Anna chances and she really didn't have time to take it uh, and so it went wrong. And that's why Anna will lose more points in this game. It could be Anna losing like, yeah, I don't know how much points she's losing in the, this game actually, but she will lose more because her opponent is less has less rating but it's like this with whoever we play we always need to keep on playing well absolutely so anna will be here with you at any moment he will she will be here with any you at any moment and this was a curious game her opponent started with a3 he wanted to get out of the theory and how we play it became an interesting position but then anna got the upper hand she absolutely got the upper hand and i will soon say goodbye to you thank you for being here watching anna's games also she will and hearing her i and she will be with you she will tell you about her thoughts it's a little bit hmm it feels a lot to lose the last game but chess is like that you have to come back and to learn from your games and the best if you can learn from your losses because there you probably had gone wrong more times so it's just done keep on learning chess and this is why it's so exciting because we can win we can make a draw but we can also lose and that's why it's getting of course so exciting Anna they're putting back the pieces and we can see the kings are on white squares the kings are on white square it meant that white won the game and here Anna will be with you at any no uh, moment. So I will say thank you. Thank you so much. But just stay a little bit longer. Anna will be with you and she will analyze the game, tell you about her thoughts and everything. So bye bye. Bye bye.
child. I have my life. I spent so much thinking. I thought my stock price I thought I was being a genius. I was being a genius. I was not being a genius at all. I am so thrilled that I actually offered my opponent the match, a rematch. Can you turn it down? <laughs> I got told I actually offered my opponent that match on the line. I like, really want to beat him. So I, I, um, I've set up a match with him actually online for a stream. <laughs> Not for today, but for at some point. I cannot believe I got so tilted after the game. I was, I, I got so tilted. So I'm actually, uh, yeah, so I've actually set up a, a match. We only see a few pixels. Wait, give me a second. I know it's good. Yeah. <laughs> let me go into this. Yeah, let me go into here. Yeah, so I've agreed to a chess match and I'm gonna I'm gonna get my revenge against this guy. Like, I'm, I'm gonna get my revenge against this guy. Okay. Uh give me a second. Like a robot. Uh, give me one second shot. Is it? Uh, hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm wondering why it's lagging. Can't hear you. Hmm. Uh, are looking now? Is it working or is it not working? Okay, let me let me try to move around. A Let's see. Is this better? Is it better here? Uh -uh. <laughs> I am so I am okay, let's see. Maybe here? Okay, I'll stand here. I uh, okay, so I'll say this again. I am so tilted and right now chess is extremely difficult and I wanna play ten hours of it and I don't wanna spend so much time thinking, but I thought that I would be being a genius and I thought that my line was really good but it was just terrible and didn't work and I got so tilted after the match the online match for 25 subs a best out of five or first five points match so we're gonna have a rematch happening online and I really want to beat this guy like I really want to beat him so that is basically uh what happened um <laughs> oh still lag okay wait Okay, wait. Better? Better? Alright, so... Okay, there we go. Let's see. I am talking to you. I am talking to you. There, okay. So, anyways, I'll say this again. I am extremely tilted. <laughs> and I got so tilted after the game that I offered him an online rematch. Um, best out of uh, five games, winner gets 25 subs. I really want to beat this guy. So, yeah, and he agreed to it. So we're, we're actually going to do, like, an online like, comeback, like, rematch against him. And I really want to beat him. Like, I, I really want to beat him. So, <laughs> that, is, that is that, guys. That is that. He's a streamer. He's a streamer. Yeah, he, he streams and he's participating in the Collegiate Chess League in the Division 3. So he knows Joe Brun and stuff. So yeah, um, so yeah, that's that. <laughs> so I, I really want to beat him. Um, I, I really do. <clears throat> yeah, because after the game, the first thing he says is, "You spend too much time," and it's like, I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. I spent too much time. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so um, I got to the next time for rematch. I mean, at first I put a hundred subs on the line, but then we both thought that it was a little bit too much, maybe. Um, so.
so we're going to be we're going to be um we're going to be um yeah doing that when i come back home so yeah <laughs> guys can i uh it's been a very exciting game what happened in the game i ever run it my sacrifice god being a genius or was being pepega i was being pepega no i mean i thought i was being a genius yeah i don't know i really thought that my line worked but i don't know if it works i thought queen e8 was beautiful i thought rook i thought all of that was beautiful but i had too little time at that point i spent way too much time um but um but yeah I kind of really quick you were better at g5 with the sauce just the queen not the bishop um did you not see of course i did see bishop a6 chat of course I saw bishop a6, but I wanted to keep my bishop. Of course I saw bishop a6, but I wanted to keep my bishop. I thought keeping my bishop was good. Um, so I, I ended this line because I believed in it. But, uh, but yeah. Um, queen 4 and you could have won the game. I really want to see the game, actually. Uh, guys, let's, I'm going to try to see the game real quick. I had to go queen seven take, take, takes e3 is just bad huh it's lying Maybe I should go outside, but I can see if it's worth for me to go outside. No, no, no. So, um, it's really bad. Is better chat how are we doing are we doing better hello everyone okay all right okay i'm back all right i wasn't gonna leave you anyways chat so i think i might have fixed it um anyways chat i am sad i've played terrible chess this tournament i've <sighs> Play too slow. I play terrible chess. I am ready to play a lot of blitz. I really, I think actually I'm gonna go back to the hotel now and I'm gonna play blitz for like three hours. Like I'm not kidding. I think I'm gonna play blitz for like three hours. Like serious. Like I'm so tilted. <laughs> like in a good way. I'm like really motivated to play. Like you know to play to play a lot better. But anyways, I'll um. I'll, uh, what was I gonna say? I'll try to play better in Menorca. I've played way too slow this tournament more than anything. Also, I'm not crying. I'm just a little bit sick. Um, I've played terrible this tournament, to be honest. I've played way too slow, way too... I, I felt very rusty, but um, it's okay. It's been a practice tournament for Menorca and I will try to play better in Menorca. That is my goal. So I am excited about that. And uh, yeah, we will see how that goes. So hopefully I'll be able to play a lot better in Menorca. I'm literally just going to practice speed. Like I'm going to practice playing lots of chess this next week. So that when I go to Menorca, I feel confident in my chess. And I can just try to play well. Like that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be my goal. So anyways, I am, 
I'm sorry, chat, that I've played so badly. I'm sorry, I've really tried my best. But uh, we'll try to make Menorca better. That's everything that we can do. And I'm excited to go there in a week. You know, I've lost, I mean, I've lost like 40 points of rating, which is not terrible. It could, could be worse. I mean, I'm back at like 2080, which is still like better than what I had when I started streaming. So it's not, it's not worse. It's not the terrible, it's not disastrous. Um, so thank you, Jared. Thank you for the 15 months. Yeah, I really, I've tried my best, guys. I really tried my best. That's probably why I've been thinking so much. But I think I just need to work a little bit on um, confidence when I'm playing and also on time management, obviously. But time management comes from confidence. So that's, I think, primarily what I need to work on. Um, and maybe I should stop sacrificing pieces. Maybe I should stop sacrificing pieces. That's maybe, that's maybe the, the number one thing I should do. The thing is this, that my mom the other day, she told me, Anna, you're too materialistic. <laughs> so I was thinking about it today during the game. I was like, you know what? I'm going to show mom that I don't care about material. <laughs> and I guess I did. <laughs> she told me this like yesterday. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was like, yay, like I can like sacrifice and, you know, not care. So mom... Like, I'm not materialistic. <laughs> I don't care about material stuff. <laughs> Guys, don't blame my mom. It's not her fault. I can't believe I lost to 1A3. This is the saddest day ever. With this, I hope we've once again proved that openings don't matter. I cannot believe I lost to 1A3. This guy trolled me so hard and I lost anyways. I cannot believe it. I, but the opening was terrible. But I guess I did what, you know, all the opponents to the cow do. And that is that they overextend. Um... But yeah, I was feeling so good. I mean, I was doing so good all the way until this point. I had 40 minutes. And then, yeah, it all started with G5. That's when it all started going down. If I would just have played normal chess, you know, like Queen E7. Yeah, I just had to play normal chess. Queen E7 and then just just play this out normally and not go for this whole crazy line. This, 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 this. Yeah, now this, this just wasn't good. This, this, I just, I really want to see if this works. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, so I did have queen e4. I mean, I saw queen e4. And then knight takes d6. No, and then queen f3. I was going to play this. Knight d5. Rook c8. Takes, takes. But then I thought this, that I was just worse. a5, king f2. Uh, sorry guys, I'm looking right now at a line. I thought I was just worse here, so I didn't play it. I saw this whole line, but I just, I thought bishop takes g3 was nice. Oh, I just, did I just blunder it? I thought queen e4 now. Oh, there's d5. Oh, guys, I don't know what, yeah, I, okay. d5, but can I not take? Oh, there's knight h6 check and I'm getting checkmate. Okay, um, yeah. Okay, we don't see board. I know you guys don't see the board. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Anyways, on a positive note, I got a very nice gift from someone here from Iceland, and he sent me a cow book, and I am very grateful. Um, I kind of want to show it. Is it over there? Yeah, I got, I got a very nice gift before the game, which was just this little nice cow book. And uh, yeah. I, I'm gonna show it to you guys. I'm gonna show it to you. It was really, it was really nice. And it's like, yeah, you guys will see. But I'm really thankful to the person that gave it to me. And he sent like some, yeah, like postcards and stuff. And it was actually a very kind message as well. So I'm very thankful for that. Does the book go moo? No, the book doesn't go moo. The book doesn't go moo. Mission fell, but we'll get him next time. Thank you, Chad. I'm sorry I played so bad. I really wish I would have played better this tournament, but chess is hard. I'm gonna go back now to play a bunch of blitz. I'm so motivated. Where is it? I think I brought it here. Okay, guys, look at this. This is the book. Like, look, it's a cow book. It's like an Icelandic cow book. Um, yeah, 
Yeah. And he left such a nice message. It was both for me and my mom. And he was like saying thank you for all the entertainment and inspiration. And I thought that was so nice. And look, there's a cow. I think this is so cool. And then it also came like with like some other stuff. Like I'm so happy. It was so nice. Wait, let me let me show it to you. Um and then there's like a little like look. <laughs> It's like a cow swimming in water and it's like a magnet. It's like a magnet. Look, you see? It's like a magnet. I think it's so cool. Like, I, I think this is so cute. <laughs> but Pia hates the cow. She does hate the cow. I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> and this book is in like several languages. A true story. It's in French, German, and in English. And I'm going to be reading this book. Oh, and it also came with, like, more, like, cool stuff, you know? Like, look, I got, like, some more postcards with cows. Like, you see this? <laughs> Icelandic cows, everyone. <laughs> look, I have so many Icelandic cows. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And there's, like, another one. Look at this. I thought these were so cool. <laughs> and then... He's, yeah, it was so nice. And then he said, Dear Anna Kremlin, just like the cow, never give up. Such a kind message. And then, yeah, this is yeah a little, a little book about cows. So, <laughs> I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. So, yeah, thank you so much to the person that sent this. I'm thankful about that um, chat. Thank you for following me on this journey. I will be doing the last two recaps um yeah we're publishing recaps like crazy in spanish and english so all the recaps will be going up i'm gonna be taking a little bit of rest before uh menorca but i will be streaming i'm streaming the collegiate chess league the 23rd and 24th and uh i don't know if it's been announced but the finals i'm gonna be co-streaming with you know someone that i think all of you are really excited to know or to hear about so i don't know if it's been announced who's gonna be streaming the finals but it's gonna be really epic like i've never um commentated with that person and it's gonna be really epic so i'm really excited so i will be streaming the 23rd and 24th so we're you know getting streams back and then i will probably do a normal stream as well before going to menorca so i will be streaming a little bit this next week and then yeah we have menorca and i will also practice chess i think i'm gonna spend a lot of time practicing chess so so yeah I am, I am excited, guys. I am excited. Thank you so much for following me throughout this whole experience. Thank you so much for following me throughout this whole journey. It's been awesome to be able to live stream all of these games, even if I haven't played so well. I appreciate you all giving me so much support all throughout the tournament. And uh, I will be back very soon. I'll be back the 23rd for the semifinals of the Collegiate Chess League. So do not miss them. I'll be doing some pro commentary then. So I'm very excited. Um, yeah. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed your time here? Have you enjoyed your time throughout this tournament? <laughs> I hope you have. I hope you have. Give a big, big, big heart to my mom as well for, um, you know, all the commentary, for all the, yeah, for being here for hours on end every day, even when I haven't played so well. Give a big shout out as well to my producer, for, you know, being here and for producing the show and for taking lots of really cool pictures of me. He's also my photographer. Uh, so give him a big shout out as well. And then give yourselves a shout out for watching all the games and watching all the recaps and everything. <laughs> give me a shout out for playing chess. And yeah, that's, I don't know who else is getting a shout out. <gasps> shout out to mods as well. Thank you so much mods for all the help that you've, you've done over here this past week. Thank you so much for helping out. Every single one of you that's been modding on both the YouTube chat and Twitch chat. Thank you so much for modding and for helping out. And uh, big, big, yeah. Really appreciate that we've been able to make this work and uh, we're gonna make Menorca even better. We're gonna make Menorca even more epic. I'm very excited. It's gonna be a very tough tournament. Lots of double rounds, but I am not losing motivation. I'm gonna keep going. So I am very excited. I'm very excited. All right, guys. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. 
Bye to Iceland. Bye to all of you. Thank you so much once again for hanging out over here for so long. Don't forget to sub to the YouTube channel. We're getting close to 1 million subs. Don't forget to sub to Anna Kremling Extra. Uh, we're posting all the VODs over there. And don't forget to sub to the Spanish Anna Kremling S if you want to um, hear me doing the recaps in Spanish. I'm posting all those recaps as well. So I filmed all the recaps. So they're just going to get posted. And yeah, that is pretty much it, everybody. Have a safe travel. Thank you so much. I think I'm going to sleep and play chess the rest of the day because I'm so tired. Um, there's a prize ceremony, but I don't know. It feels bad, man. It feels bad, man. I should go to a prize ceremony. I'm going to go to a prize ceremony. It just feels a little bad, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, give me someone to raid, everyone. Yeah, you guys can maybe, if you want, check out my, my chess.com because there's a very big chance that I'm actually spending some hours playing chess today. Like, I'm not even kidding. I am a little bit tilted. All right. Who should I raid? Um, I'll raid both tasks. Wish them a little bit of good luck. And then that's that. Both. Oh, wait. Oh, I typed the wrong thing. Wait, give me a second. Bullet or blitz? I'm playing blitz. I'm playing blitz. Maybe with a hint of bullet. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe with a hint of bullet. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all the 23rd for the semifinals of the Collegiate Chess League. Bye-bye. 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 I'll go to the prize ceremony, guys. I was kidding. I was kidding. In one hour, I'll be fine. But yeah.